That was last episode, man. Hey! <laughs> cut it out, man. As Dave Cuyo so brilliantly said, cut it out. That's the worst joke ever. That is the stupidest full house dun, thing ever. Dun, And there's a lot of stupid dun, full house dun, things. Salute. We drink. I'm not drinking your shit tequila. I'm drinking my fucking... Shit tequila? Ackroyd vodka, my friend. I'll salute. Hey, found your cock ring again. Oh, whoa. That's my dad's cock ring. Oh, dear, I touched it again. <laughs> it's on my finger. Hold on, hold on, I need to... Okay. Hi, everybody. Hola. I'm sorry, we didn't see you there. Oh. Buenos de los beer googles. Oh, hi, oh hi, hi there. I didn't see you there. Welcome to another episode of Beer Googles, where we still are getting drunk and looking up random shit on the internet. Uh, today, well, today. Again today. Again today. We're going to talk about some fun stuff. We're going to have some fun stuff. And, and please, tell us how stupid our fucking shit is, because... We need to hear from you. We already know it's stupid. Yeah. We just need reassurance that it is stupid. Yeah, exactly. And can you give us more shitty ideas to do? Because this this one came to us from someone, I'm sure. Of this course. one came to us from Kyle from Nebraska. Kyle writes, Dear Beer Googles, could you do an episode about movie scenes that you fancy? Yes, Kyle. We're going to do that. Why did Kyle come up? Is Kyle even a thing? It probably came from South Park Bastards. Thank you, Kyle. <sighs> For your, Thank you, Kyle, for, for your, your time <laughs> and effort in reaching out to us. It's and, very much appreciated. And your non-existence. What? Which is even, yeah, Kyle's made up, bro. <laughs> I just lied about Kyle. Ding, bro. You need a ding sound. Oh, we need a ding Every sound. Every time you doing, say bro. All right, we're not doing that. Ding. But, okay, I'm with you, though. I agree. I agree. But I don't have a ding right now. So I'm just going to stop saying the word. So. Do you have a question for Ky me? Kyle, Kyle from Nebraska. Do you have a question for me? I do. Dude. Can you get that over? Let me like move. Yeah, you go. Dude, did you eat the last unicorn? Nope. I don't believe you. I believe Shout you out did. to the t shirt, shirt gift yes. people. So Chris has about 436 shirts that he's been gifted over the years from, from multiple 400 friends. people. <laughs> yes. Now, he knows everyone who's given him gifts. I can't state nor not state that he knows exactly which shirt was given by whom. I can state that I do not know. Okay. I will state this. We are going to showcase those shirts as they come. On the YouTube. And it's been happening the whole time. I didn't even know this. Yes. So all shirts, yes. All of the shirt. Death Metal with the unicorn on oh, it. Oh, Death Metal. The rainbow, the right? pink Death Metal shirt. Pink Death Metal shirt. All of these shirts have been gifted to Mr. No, Christopher No, the Iron Maiden ones I did purchase well, the, myself. Okay, the Iron Maiden okay. ones, yeah. Iron Maiden. But the ones that are like Iron Ick. Well, yeah, the one that has the two dinosaurs, <laughs> yes. and he has rainbow coming out of his mouth, yeah. and obviously there's a dead unicorn on it. There's, look at, there's a horn on the bottom. I heard that no unicorns were harmed during the making of that shirt. That is correct, sir. Absolutely, just accurate. like the Kesha Blow video, James Vanderdouche. Dang, I have no have I, idea. Have you ever seen that? No. Okay, I have to show that to you. It is the best music video in the history of music videos. No joke. Kesha's Blow video with James Vanderdouche is. Fucking epic. Hey, man, can, can you do it's me epic. a favor? Yes. Never show me a Kesha video in your fucking life. Can I show you a K dollar sign huh video? No, that either. Oh, so excited to never watch one of those. Well, Kyle from Nebraska, thank you for sending in your email that it's non-existent, asking us to pick some movie scenes that we fancy. Thank you, Kyle. We find, we find them fanciful. So now these are not like... We're going to have your friend on at some point, correct? I believe yes, Abel. Abel? Yes. Who is, can you please tell us his um, his qualifications? Or uh, what, my best friend whatever. Abel has a bachelor's degree in film production. Uh, and more importantly, he's a psycho movie geek. He's a nerd. Uh, movie sure. Movie nerd. No. Movie um, nerd. But he reads movie industry newspapers and, and magazines and stuff that he, he's like, oh, I read in this magazine stuff that I've never even heard of. Like, he'll read scripts that never go to fruition. 
Like, oh, this script was written by this famous guy for this famous actor, but it never got the funding back in 2012. And then in 2016, it was kind of rewritten for this guy, but never got funding. And then I'm like, what? So it's sounds crazy. fucking nuts, dude. Yeah, that like, sounds oh, and this way was, above my pay grade. Yeah, it's just crazy to hear some of the things. Oh, and then in 2017, they rewrote this specific scene, and it was supposed to be the first time they were ever going to film it in this way, and then using this type of camera angle. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> so it's some of the sh- it's fantastic. Some of the stuff they he says about oh yeah, Halloween it was the first amazing. time they ever filmed one. The first five minutes was only filmed. With one take. Whoa. What? Like a one take. Yeah, it wasn't ever. Like the first five minutes of Halloween in 1978 was not edited. I was like, holy shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was like, I didn't know that. And I'm not not a big. Horror is. It's okay. It's not my favorite. Horror shit. Shut up. It's not my. Horror music. Horror movies suck. Well, everyone likes. That's. Everyone has their thing, right? Oh, I'm sorry. That was judgy. And so it begins. Horror movies have their place in the world. But go ahead, go ahead. Anyway, I guess Halloween is um, known not only as a horror movie, Michael Myers and all that bullshit, but Jamie Lee Curtis, but also for that film technique. Ah, there you go. That's awesome. So we're going to have him on at one point, And what's funny is like he shared some of his scenes. And when I go to that movie, I go, that's not the fucking scene, I think. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because sure. I hope he doesn't take it personally when I shit on every one that he, that he says, oh, well, this is like. Because he comes from highbrow. Yeah, his, I'm lowbrow, boy. Right. I'm going to pull my finger. I'm a, yeah, you know, what's technical. that called? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, pull my, I'm, a pull, yeah. I'm a dick and fart kind of guy, joke guy. <laughs> Like, so, Dick and fart. by the way, the movie scenes that I chose, thanks Kyle again from Nebraska for choosing this as a topic. Um, I just made, I just came up with ones that popped in my head and they're ones that I watch and I go, Oh man, I remember that. And they just, they, I find them fond. I'm fond of them. They're not necessarily great scenes. Even they're just ones of which I'm fond of which, of which for which you are looking. And we're, I think check and check Mark's going to come on later tonight, I'm today and do one of his favorites. I'm looking favorite. forward to what his favorites he are. Like, he likes a couple movies. He had, I think they just released, um, uh, what movie was that? I think they just released days of thunder in, in where check Mark's at. So he's a little bit behind, but you know, 88, Does that's not he too like bad. The, he likes racing. He says, no, rubbing. He's, he's not, he did not hit you. He did not bump you. He did not nudge you. He rubbed you and rub you, son. He's racing. Rubbing, rubbing is racing. Rubbing is racing, sir. That's what he say. He just watched it. It just came out. Yes. It's actually number one in the box. Does, office. uh, so check Mark does like the drafting. Yeah. He likes that. Oh, he likes drafting. You take yeah. these little sugar packet. Yes. Up, uh, down up, the leg. Yes. Down, down the Nicole leg. Kidman's thigh. And yes. Vroom. <laughs> yep. That's, That's Checkmark's favorite scene. Checkmark's when you favorite can see Nicole's scene. leg. He likes Nicole Kidman. Of course. It makes like one of us. <laughs> it's the only one. Checkmark is not only the president of the Nicole fan club, but he is a member. A client. He's, I'm a client of the Nicole Kidman fan club. No. He is the only member of the fan club. So may I, may I start Please with the first one? rescue me. Uh, no, you're doing great, bro. Oh, God, help us. I just said it. Ding. Um, so the first one I'd like to talk about, if everyone remembers like old school Batman, I think it was 88 ish. I don't know. The exact... June 23rd, 1989. Sure. Is that real? Is that You're correct? You're goddamn right. Get the fuck out of here. I'll tell you that story. Why well, know that if you want, <laughs> I will hear that in fucking two seconds. <laughs> yeah, so I, something about this scene is just awesome. Cause like we've, we've seen it. We grew up with it. It was still our childhood. And then we use it in our college years, right? Like whenever we, promoted someone or moved someone up. But I remember the, the scene where Jack Pounce and then Nicholson does it later. So both scenes kind of as one because they're kind of just in continuation. But Pounce like kills his favorite guy and then Jack Nicholson comes up and fills, fills him. Or actually, no, that's not what happens, right? I think Pounce just calls Jack Nicholson over and he goes, you are my number one. And then Nicholson kills a guy and then does the same kind of thing. You're not my number one guy. Yeah, you're my number one guy. Fucking awesome scene. Pal- First of all, Pounds' voice. In that. He's like, fantastic. I always liked him. Oh, my number one. And just the way he just does that. Even in City Slickers, he's good. Oh, yeah. And he was great in that. And he's great in Tango and Cash as the bad guy. Oh, yeah. Tango and Cash. Just his voice has that awesomeness. And then Nicholson just hamming it up the second time. Something about that scene. If everyone remembers that, you are my number one. 
guy. That was that was boring. my number one guy. My number one guy. Is it? Did he? Both of them are number one guy. The second one, yes. With the Joker, it was guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm. I trust that. I just. I didn't do too much research because I'm just drinking. So I figured everyone's drinking with us. God, I spent like 15 minutes doing research, dude. You're 14 did, minutes behind I did eight April. minutes. Oh shit! So I only did half. <laughs> like you know how much people do time times half? I do half of what everyone else does. They do times half. They do one and a half times the work. Did you not watch Kingpin? N- no, <sighs> bro. I thank God that's not on any list. I love that movie. I watched it last night. You did not. <laughs> did. <sighs> Thanks, Mister Munson, brother, brother Munson, Hezekiah, and he's drinking. Oh, this, this, this girl got a. Uh, that's a whole other scene. I'm not going there. Whoa! Thank right. God we're not going scene, there. Scene two. Scene, sir, is you. <gasps> I'm my number one. One that just sticks in my head. How about you, man? Which you want to hear how I know it's that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's just, let's not wait, do a story. I'll when just did tell it? You. Yeah. Just tell June me. We're not going to do story. June twenty third, eighty nine. So my best friend Abel, psycho Batman guy. He has a Batman symbol uh, tattoo on his leg. So in the our that was our senior year of high school, not yours, uh, mine, and because uh, you're a spring chicken. So yeah, in the school, like the last school newspaper you. of our senior year, he put in the newspaper. Like, you got to put in a sentence or a paragraph, whatever. Every senior got to do that, right? So yeah. he put in there all one word, no no fucking... It was kind of like a hashtag, way ahead of his time, Abel. <laughs> it was kind of like the pound sign. So, but he put in no spaces, Batman, June 23rd, go see it, everyone. No spaces. No way. That's why I know the date. Because Abel did that. So June 23rd every year, he gets a text message that says, go see it, everyone. <laughs> every fucking year I send him that text message. It just says, go uh, see it, everyone. Along with the text that you receive every once in a while that says, uh, I have to go now. <laughs> so yeah, Abel and I have a few. Also, um, uh, probably 10 years ago, when I was going to see my parents about before my dad passed away, about... Sorry, I was thanks, man. What I spent three years. That's it's fine. I know he's I, he was a, he was a rock star. I'm, no, I'm sorry I had to deal with him for yeah, the, fuck, your whole right. life. He was he was what he was. Whatever. <laughs> sorry, I'm just fucking around. I was with my parents for about three hours, and I sent Abel a text message, and it said, dot 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 dot. Fuck. Dot 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 dot. So every once in a while, I just get a text from Abel. It just says, dot 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 dot. Fuck. Dot 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 dot. That's all. I like. Right, it's so, stupid as shit, and, man. And just so you know, sir, yes. you are my, my number one guy. guy. Boom. So I like your scene, dude. Thanks, bro. I fucking approve that shit. Stamp approved. Boom, skis. Just everyone knows it at some point. Yeah. But did not know July 3rd, 1989. June 23rd. June 23rd, 1989. I looked. I tried looking it up. I couldn't even vet it because I'm... Not good with the uh, the the thing that's in our title that we can't talk about because it would be copyright infringement. Your Googles? Well, the Googles are fine because it's double E, double O, double G. But if I said the other thing, if I search engined it, it would have been that. So um, so that's my first one is you are my number one guy. And uh, that's from Batman. Boom. Hold it up to the screen, everybody. Look at that. Please see. Oh, there it is. Boom. I can't believe you fucking doubted me, dude. It's not that I didn't doubt you. I just wanted to I wanted to verify showing how well you knew it. It wasn't to doubt you, man. Come on. Look. I know that you didn't eat the last unicorn. So I trust you. Oh, you don't. Ugh, don't make me get a stick of gum, fucker. I'll Sir, fucking do it. I will uh, not. I Oh, that's a good one. That's a good Give me your nail clippers, bitch. Um, no. Yes. Now give them to me now. Look, I got a big tone out. Just kidding. I don't. Uh, sir. Yes. I need to go now. <laughs> Dude, you know what? You're I, you have so much approval to use that shit whenever you want because it's fucking it's, hysterical, dude. It's hilarious. I expect in like three years we'll be on podcast eighty nine and you go. I have to go now. And I'm gonna fucking <laughs> and pee. dot dot dot. <laughs> I'm gonna and pee we're gonna, my pants yeah. laughing, dude. And we're gonna actually show the pig, just the the darkening nail. the darkening of the shorts. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's she, dude, it's so it is funny. funny. That is so funny. It's I, so dumb, I'm totally dude. On board with that. Anyway, 
So June yes, 23rd, 1989, yes, you were my number one guy. And now you get to share your first scene. Thanks I, to I Kyle from Nebraska. <laughs> I like that we make up fucking people who care about what we're listening to. <laughs> you look very intense over there. I'm trying to, I don't want to fuck oh. up the the word. So I'm going to read it to you from oh. IMDB. You're going to verbatim it? I wonder if we copyright infringement if we verbatim it. Uh, yeah. It, should I? I would think we should outline, just kind of describe it and then maybe use some of the close what? words. Like, don't read it exactly. For real? I don't know. Fucking read it. I don't care. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to use the character names. Yeah, I was exactly. Just, yeah, we're just going to say it I was just going to use yeah, the... Because I don't want to... I was... And we're crediting them. Right, it's fine, not like... But no. I, won't, I won't... Well, no, we're not playing the actual thing. So go, do it. You're good. Okay. We're good. Yeah, because it's just me speaking. It's content, yes. And I wasn't going to use the character names. I was just going to use the, the... 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 What's it called? The... Script quotes, I don't know. the quotes, yeah, the uh, actual words, uh, uh, the uh, the words that are written on the paper, lines? script, the script, script without anyway. Names. I'm gonna blow my load early and go with Top Gun. No, sir, yes, you're gonna start with you're gonna start with Top Gun, <laughs> yeah, why? Because I like premature ejaculation. Oh, god, <laughs> shit, I owe three dollars. <laughs> Box of love.org. Fuck, it's thirteen dollars. Well, it's ten from me though. Yeah, thirteen dollars. Yes, thirteen total. That, We're on a running tally. Owe, thirteen. Do is that three dollars? I said no. Okay, that was no. You didn't actually talk about the actual material. That's why when I say I shit on people, okay, you can't call me out on that. It's not like the other one I did. I used ten dollars worth of poop jokes. Disgustingness. Yes, I deserve that. Okay, I deserve that. Okay. You don't. You're good. Okay, but you are blowing your load early. Starting with starting with Top Gun. Yeah, I started with Batman eighty nine. Well, and you start with Top Gun. Yeah, because I didn't want to start with something Man. too serious. Okay, I, that's true. You know what I'm saying? That's I didn't want to go. Good point. Something, you know. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. Irregardless. Blah, blah, blah. Are you? Can you, Joe Pesci? Okay, 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 okay. Fuck you with the drive-through. So that's not. In, maybe that should be a scene from fucking Lethal Weapon Four. Okay, 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 okay. Fuck you with the drive-through. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dumpster fire of hilarity, ladies and gentlemen. West Virginia. Uh, actually, That's Siskel mama. and Ebert did call it a dumpster fire of hilarity. Top Gun? They're both dead, but they both said it. Dumpster fire of hilarity. No, our, our podcast. <laughs> our podcast is a dumpster fire of hilarity. <laughs> they came back from the grave. All right, you ready, fool? I'm ready. This is the scene when all I the turn pilots... turn back at you. All the pilots first meet Charlie... Who's not in the next movie? Who totally blew up and got fat and disgusting ugly uh, later? Thank you for your excellent. <laughs> is it Kelly McGillis? It is Kelly McGillis. She's a beautiful woman. I was she just was. joking. Oh, fuck. No, she is. I'm sure she's a beautiful soul still. Yes. Just wrapped in a different vessel than back then. It's okay. Different. It's different than it was. I'll tell you well, how much. Aren't all of us? Yeah. <laughs> In 1986, I was a glorious young man. Somebody, I rebranded as a hot adult. Oh, totally. Because I started off as a fat young man. Not a baby, but a fat young man. Right. Top Gun. Top Gun. The scene when all the pilots. They're in the hangar. They're in the hangar. They're outside, kind of like yeah, it's uh, right just, at the, air, right no, the airport. When, uh, oh, not the airport, the base. at the Yes, Miramar Naval Air Station Thank in you. San Diego, which is known as a whale's West vagina. Ju- I didn't take that. We moment. crossed the streams, bro. Uh, Man, do we Diego, missing Ghostbusters? Do we have a Ghostbusters? We don't have a Ghostbusters. Anyway, You've got two more. <clears throat> Sorry, this is, we're going to be 68 hours. We're, it's going to be fun, though. Okay. So, Lieutenant, where exactly were you? Well, we, thank you, started oh, yeah. up on his six when we pulled through the clouds, and then I moved him above him. Well, if you were directly above him, how could you see him? Because I was inverted. <coughs> Bullshit. No, he was, man. It was a really great mood. He was inverted. You were in a 4G inverted dive with a MiG-28? Yes, ma'am. At what range? Uh, about two meters. It was actually about one and a half, I think. It was about one and a half. I've got a great Polaroid of it. He was right there. It must have been one at one and a half. It was a nice picture. Thanks. Uh, Lieutenant, what were you doing there? Communicating, communicating, keeping up foreign relations, you know, giving him the bird. 
You know the finger. Yes, I know the finger, Goose. Oh, I'm sorry. I hate it when it does that. I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Came out of nowhere. And scene. I love that scene. You were in a 4G, 4G inverted, inverted dive. dive. Negative, negative 4 With a MiG-28. Oh, at what weird. range? It's probably about me, one and, me and, a and a half. You know, giving them the bird. Yes, Goose, I know the finger. It's a beautiful scene. That movie is really good. Yes, ma'am. Scene. Puts on his glasses. Oh, fuck. And then Goose, that motherfucker. And then he goes to ER. What a fucking douchebag. Well, babe. you know. He need to make money. He's, he's older. He's get balding. He's got balding? He was, he's, he's balding. <laughs> what did you say? He's balding. He's got to be a doctor because he can't just be a Top Gun pilot after that. Well, you got to shave the rest of your head. You have a glorious a- head. Well, we have some people we know that have beautiful domes. Like yourself, thank that you. Are, that are pilots in the Air Force. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Or the Navy, or the Marine Corps, or the Coast Guard, or the Army chopper pilots. Is that what takes off the hair? What? Is that what takes off the yes, hair? Yes, the the, 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 the rear the rotor takes off the hair. Okay, it just flies in there and yeah, gets caught up. in Every the gears Friday you go back there and you just cut off the sides. Nice. It's like a trick. It's just a little off the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Top Gun. I can't believe you blew your load with Top Gun, man. It is the best scene. I was like, you're in a 4G inverted, inverted dive. dive with MiG-28. Which doesn't exist, by the way, but that's cool. Yeah, it's totally true. Not it's, true. <laughs> it's really an F5 painted black with a red star. It is true. That is definitely true. That's, but that's cool. Bitch. It's a movie. But they were going to use F. They use F5s in Mir- at Miramar as well. In at Miramar. In at. Yes, both. Both of them. Both of them. So scene three. Two go was your Top Gun scene. I like yes. it. I can't believe you blew your load. All right, I'm gonna. I st- I'm starting off weak because obviously I start with Batman. For God's sakes, that's good, dude. I'm gonna go to a, a very very popular movie titled Harley Davidson and the Barbro Man with a Don, with with a a, a, a well known Don Johnson in between his Miami Vice phase and his current. Yeah, you know, he's like taken off again. He has. Yeah, Tin Cup. I'd say it started again for him. Sure. Between. Between Miami Vice and Tin Cup, he kind of disappeared. He banged a couple people and popped out a kid, I think, at some point, right? What? Dakota? Isn't Dakota his? I don't know. Dakota Johnson. Wasn't she in some Fifty Shades of Douche or something? Oh, that's his kid? Yeah, that's his kid. The ugly oh, I, didn't, yeah, the I don't watch that shit. Oh, bro, I didn't know. It was Melanie Griffith and him. I thought they banged out a kid. Wasn't that? Oh, okay. I could be wrong. I don't, I don't read Apologies. fucking People magazine. Well, anyway, in between that, and also between Mickey Rourke's nine and a half weeks and his resurgence in like Avenger, Avengers, Avengers, guess, Iron Man, or whatever, those. Iron Man, yeah, Iron Man two, and then he was all Expendables, all those. He kind of started. He kind of came back, right? There were these gap years, and during that time, they made a little well known, little well known movie called Harley Davidson Marlboro Man. Harley Davidson was played by Mickey Rourke because he was a tough guy, cool with his hair, and he came, you know. Sexy guy with a leather jacket. Don Johnson played the Marlboro Man. Cowboy with his boots. His dad got him. Taped him up with duct tape all the time. Spitting. Putting. You know, that guy. So there's a little known scene where um, Harley Davidson. I'm sorry, the Marlboro Man. Don Johnson has his motorcycle. He pulls it up. He's like, I hate this piece of shit. Blah, 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 blah. So Mickey Rourke pulls out a handgun and just starts shooting at the motorcycle, but hits like sprays all around it. Like it doesn't even come close. And he finishes. And Don Johnson looks at him and goes, Damn it, Harley. If you were shooting for shit, you wouldn't catch a whiff. <laughs> and, then, and then Mickey Rourke. Who's Harley Davidson goes, oh, man, here you go. Happy birthday. And he hands him the gun. So it must have been Don Johnson's birthday in the movie. And he goes, damn, man, I almost forgot. So he takes it, loads it up and goes, ching, 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 and shoots all like the little points of the motorcycle. It falls over like he's like a fucking dead shot. He unloads it, takes it off. Damn it, Harley. You got to squeeze the trigger, Harley. Don't yank it. It's not your dick. (laughs) Squeeze it. And that's always a scene. Because, like, whenever somebody's not handling something right, I just say, don't yank it. It's not your dick. Squeeze it. Squeeze the trigger. Stupid. I know. But I love it. If you haven't had a chance to watch Harley Davidson, The Marvel Man, probably don't. Probably don't? (laughs) I love it. You're a terrible salesperson. It's got Big John Stud in it. 
Yeah, the wrestler. Like the wrestler okay. from way back in the day. It's got uh, obviously Mickey Rourke and oh. oh Tia Carrera and Tom Sizemore. Really, Tia Carrera at post Wayne's World two, Wayne's World or two Wayne's World two. Was she in both? No, she was only in the second one with Rob Lowe. Yes, right. Yes, okay. Wayne's World two. But they spoke Mandarin. I think, or it was right either right before or right after. I don't remember. One of the Tung two. Wow. Guaranteed. That, that was Mandarin. That was not making fun of the Asian That's what community. they were ordering food on. That's what they were taught. That's, that's exact. They were ordering the. Off the menu. The crab puffs. And he, when he wanted cream of some young guy? No, it was the crab puffs. It wasn't the cream of some young no. guy scene? Oh, it was Hu Feng Poo. <laughs> Fook me? Yes. Fook and, you uh, and Fook me? Yeah. From... It was the orange Mandarin chicken and the crab puffs. Love in it. In the Wings of World 2. It was delicious, my totally, friend. Totally, dude. So that that was my second one. Very good job. Thanks, man. I dig it. Look. And I like your pew 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 Damn it. You gotta squeeze the trigger, Harley. Don't yank it. Don't yank it. It's not your dick. Squeeze it. That's how I learned how to shoot. Thanks, Don Johnson. It's pretty good. Yours, yours, you blew your load. So yeah, I got it's nothing. all downhill. Yeah, yeah, here. totally downhill. I got, uh, I'm out. <laughs> you got nothing left. Uh, no, yeah. I'm, all right, thanks. I need We're a nap out. and a Gatorade and a this cigarette. This is the shortest. This is the shortest episode for us because it's 30 minutes. Uh, and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Want to get some food after this? Yeah, let's get some food after okay. this. Like right now. Bye bye. Like we should eat while we should be chewing while the other one's talking and see if we can just really get that misophonia going. Misophonia. Misophonia. All right, what's what's your uh, second one? So well, I got all kinds of shit up in here. I love dude. it. I love it. Um, let's go for Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> Classic. I'm gonna go with the concert scene towards the end. My name's Lamar. Got to say, I'm oh, sorry. Clap your hands, everybody. Yeah. Everybody, Everybody clap your hands. Where the redhead is spiked hair playing the violin. <laughs> Booger and, Presley on the mean guitar. Um, do you know who was in that, sir? Funny that you went Top Gun and then Revenge of the Nerds. Yes, Goose was. Boom. Yes, Goose was, was one of the guys dressed like Debo. <laughs> Goose was. Correct. Goose was one then like second the, uh, major nerd. Correct. He was number two nerd. I didn't think of that. He was his number one guy. And then they had the Japanese guy dressed like a Native American on the bong. 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 And then they had uh, the African American guy dressed like uh, like Michael Jackson in the red outfit. Yeah. And they had the, uh, the other little redheaded Happy. kid come out. And they did the concert, and they did the song, and it was awesome. Omega I'm... Moose. <laughs> lambda, 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 and Omega Moose. <gasps> oh, shit. And I remember, all I remember Lamar in the in the Olympics is with his limp wrist L- style and limp, the javelin, yes. and it goes, go, 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 his, go, 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 and it goes like... We, uh, we designed the aerodynamics <laughs> for his limp wristed throwing style. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Was... Oh, my God, that's... That's when we can make jokes about it and just have fun with it and yeah. like not be mean. And it was just fun. I don't even know. I thought I about know. going with the scene, which has is so dumb, but just where the, 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 I don't remember the name of the sorority, the other sorority, just when they were going, ooh, ah, alpha, beta, ooh, ah, alpha, beta. Because I catch myself singing that about once a week because yeah. it's so stupid. And I always catch myself doing the ogre thing where I'm just like, <laughs> And of course, I love the scene where... Um, it's funny that we're talking about one scene from each movie. We're just going to go through... We're going to talk about 20 movies. Everybody. Yeah, the shit. But when... Um, <laughs> like I don't remember her name, the, the, the main character, the main blonde chick from the other sorority, when she's she takes her pin off and it's gives it back McGinnis, to Stan. It? Yeah, of course, it's Kelly McGinnis. <laughs> she takes her pin off and gives it back to Stan, the main alpha beta, and goes... I'm in love with a nerd. I was like, oh, I remember that's that. That's every nerd's dream, dude, to get the hot chick freaking cheerleader girl. And that's about, that was between 25 and 30 years ago. Was it 83 ish, 84 ish, oh, something yeah. like that? Yeah. It's kind of somewhere between that. Oh, yeah, dude. 25 years later, Twitter world, nerds are running things. <laughs> what a shocker. Well, I, I know it's because people follow the money, but I'm not going to, by people, I don't mean people. The money. That was an excellent scene. I, sir, you get that, that you get a gold star for that one. Yay, me, gold star. Because <laughs> clap your hands, everybody. Everybody, clap your hands. That's a great one. 
All right, sir. I'm going to share my number three. Revenge of the Nerds 84. 84. So there you go. 25 years ago, now run, nerds do run everything. Because, well, that's all. I'm the, we're not going to, I'm not going to get on that soapbox. We'll talk about that offline. Sure. So I'm going to go with one of my favorite scenes of all times. We use it all the time. All times. All times. All times. It happens to be Star Wars, your favorite movie that you took it with you on your island. You took four with you. I did. A New Hope. Jace. And it's when Obi, I'm going to do an Philly accent over there. Obi. So Obi over there, you got Luke Skywalker here, you got R2-D2 and C-3PO in the back, and they're on that little hovering thing. He's like, he's going to sell his T-38 to get a couple bucks to get a ride on out of the Luke's Eisley over there. Is that right? Yeah. I yeah, so he I'm pulls up. So Obi-Wan pulls up on a little stinger and and these stormtroopers are over there and they're like, let me see some identification. And then I'm going to non-Philly that because it's much better. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do it all in Philly. I, I don't, why did you deviate? Yeah, Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan's like, you don't need to see your identification over there. <laughs> and they're like, we don't need to see his identification. These aren't the droids. These ain't the droids you're looking for over there. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Over here. He can go about his business. You can go about your business. Move along. Move along. Move along. Best scene of any scene ever. Because I just remember, these aren't the droids you're looking for. And if Checkmark was going, these are not for two looking for the droids for which you're too for looking. <laughs> I could have gone A so lot of two fours about. up in there. That was like three fours. <sighs> It's so, like 107. Favorite Star Wars scene. I love it. Not the droid. It's this move, too. It's every time. It's, these aren't the droids. So. Move sir, along. On to you. That's move move very along. good. Move along. That's amazing. Thanks. Man. Is there a better... In any of the 97 Star Wars movies... Nine Star Wars movies, is there a better scene? Oh. Like, powerful-wise? Probably Darth Vader throwing the Emperor down the shaft is pretty powerful. But I don't know if that's a better scene. Han I just, shooting Greedo first. Oh, shit. Han. Oh, yeah. That's definitely I mean, the best. Well, that's the scene that no one ever in their, any generation is going to know. Because Laserdisc well, players will break over time. But and I only have it on Laserdisc. Every, the, valid points, Mr. Laserdisc. Han, sh Han shot first. We know. Actually, no. That's not even a true statement. Han shot. Yeah. Han shot. Greedo yes. never got a shot off. Correct. But anyway. um, it's close. I I think the Han scene's better, but that I felt just this one was like just Luke powerful getting his arm cut off, like realizing yeah. his ah, dad, his dad. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, the Dagobah scene where some people like he cuts the mask off of Vader and he sees his own face. Oh, that's a good. Some one. truest love that I don't really like it. I like the Tauntaun getting cut up. That's by really Han good. Solo and he's like, you God, thinking, and I thought they smelled bad on the, on the outside. Yeah, that's like, amazing. That's a great scene. He shoves them in there. I think the snow scene the next morning. Yeah. The, Where he's like, waving. Yeah. It's like the, the snow speeders, yeah. how crystal clear the snow and the sky is. Oh, yeah. It's just like, beautiful. wow. It really was cinematically that beautiful. That was like, <sighs> I love it. Yeah. We could talk about every scene. We could probably but reenact like guess, the first three Star Wars. Is, is, is. Is, is, is there a better scene than what you said, right? I feel like everyone knows this one because oh, the yeah. phrase Han shot first is very limited between geeks and, and older people. True. people. True. Lucas literally took it out of the scene. It doesn't exist in, yeah. Any, yeah. in any form anywhere. Yeah. So if you're... Under 30, 35? I would say 30, 30. I would Let's say, say 30. 40. Because you're yeah, but we're 40, six. you're young 40s, six. right? Yeah. It and could you be. know about it. Right. So but younger I was also than you dork. is really pushing it. Right. Yeah, it's true. I mean, but yeah, because all people, that. nobody younger than me saw it in the let's say 40. Yeah. But remember, it was so released on video. Six didn't see it in the theater. Right. And if they did, they don't remember it. It was the reenactment. I think it was early 90s when they did on DVD or mid. No, maybe mid to late Nin 90s. 99? 95? Yeah, 99. Was when. They put out the trilogy together and then edited with all the well, Lucas additions. That's like because Jabba the Hutt walking around him, stepping on his tail and all that shit. Horrible. I can tell you that's the worst scene of any Star Wars movie ever. And I've seen a lot of bad Star Wars movie scenes at the end, towards the end. That's a bad. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Him and I get them trying to do it, but it didn't make that should never been entered into it. 
Have you ever seen the original footage of that? Yes. It's just some big fat dude. It's a it's big fat dude. white dude. Yeah, which I didn't mind that. Yeah, why not keep Jabba that way then? Why did you go Jabba to that? Because, maybe it, to because they had to do it because of fucking right. Jedi. But why didn't they look at this going, maybe we want to reincorporate this? Why don't we make Jabba this guy? Because Lucas is crazy. Ah, I know, he's crazy. I'm sorry I asked the question. I'm sorry. I No, but you're right. The I'm scene. Tired. That's probably... Are you? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. It's just an exhausting... It is an exhausting... Because Star Wars is so complex and you, you're like, okay, well... Everyone hated Attack of the Clones, or they hated fucking right. blah 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 blah. But yeah, but there's still some parts that aren't bad. There's so mm-hmm. there's some parts that are good about even the newer ones. There's a great lightsaber battle in the last one, but the movie was shit. Yeah, and I mean, even bigger with the first one though is Alec Guinness. I believe got an Oscar nomination or won the Oscar. I think he already was an Oscar winner going into it. But but he got nominated for Star Wars, didn't he? I have no and idea. And he was upset about that because he thought it was shit. Like, it was coming out of... Well, Alec Guinness was a very well-known actor. Correct. Like, a very thespian. He was a yeah, thespian. Like, Shakespeare's and shit. Yeah, he had so much cred going into that. <laughs> and he, I don't think he really really took to the character afterwards. In hindsight, he did not like Obi-Wan. But we're going to have to look that up. Dude, we Even haven't the, had a shot oh, in, like, shit. 30 minutes. Fuck yes. America... Fuck yeah. Stealing your thunder. You asked, bro. Motherfucker. Right. So, uh, yeah, probably one of the most powerful scenes. These aren't the droids you're looking for. And everybody uses that as a fucking thing. So, well, yeah, you could say this is not the tequila you're looking for. Yes, exactly. You could say whatever you want. These you aren't know? the dogs you're looking for. Have you seen my dog? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Have you seen the last unicorn? This is not the unicorn you're looking for. This is not the unicorn I'm looking for. Right? Move along. Move oh, along. Shit, I dropped a battery. <laughs> We're going to drink some more. Welcome to the vodka, 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 Star Wars. All right, that was my three. How about you, sir? Next one. All right. Um, I'm going to go with oh, Untouchables. Oh, good one. There's so many good scenes in Untouchables. Uh, which is Kevin Costner and um, Sean Connery. And... I'm not really big into gangster movies. I know you are, but I like some like Goodfellas and stuff yeah, like that's that. But you. not huge gangster, gangster. Yeah, I mean, I know you like Goodfellas, and I know you like mob movies. So, and that's not Sopranos. Yeah, I like yeah, all that. And that's stuff. not. I mean, I don't mind them, but that's not my genre. It's not my thing. But I liked Untouchables because it's a period piece. It takes place seventy years ago, whatever, like Prohibition, and it has that feel to it. And I like the costumes. Very well done. Yeah, I like the fact that it's it's in a different era and it was represented well in that. And I I like movies like that. And I like the the story and the character. You know, you know the characters. You know Al Capone and you know Elliot Ness and you know you know what's going to happen, right? You know you know there's going to be gunfire and the murders and you know that he's going to get caught eventually. You you, you know what's going to happen. It's kind of like Titanic, but bigger than that, the cast. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. was. Awesome. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but like Titanic. Titanic, Titanic yeah. you know the Ice Bruce going to win. <laughs> yeah, oh, like the Bible. It's not a tie at the end? No, you, just the Bible, you know what's going to happen. Like, I've read yeah. the book. You know what happens. So it's not a big surprise. Yeah. But I like the fact, the scene that I liked the best was with Elliot Ness and um, uh, Malone was uh, Sean Connery's character. They're in a church, and the camera angle is looking up at them, and they're kneeling down, and they're talking about, how do you get Capone? And uh, Malone says, you, you said you want to get Capone. Do you really want to get him? You see what I'm saying? What are you prepared to do? Elliot Ness says, anything within the law. And then what are you prepared to do? If you open the can on these worms, you must be prepared, be prepared to go all the way. I cannot do a Connery, so I apologize ahead of time. Because they're not going to give up the fight until one of you is dead. I want to get Capone. You wanted to say something? Okay. I'm being... I, I, excuse I, me. I'm behaving. I'm shutting my fucking trap. I've been trying really hard because I speak over people. It, it's a bad thing, and I've been really trying hard. Yeah, I thought... Yeah, I, I, I saw wouldn't a, do it. I saw oh, a hand, hand. Oh, I apologize. No, it no, wasn't no you're good, and I didn't I was going to jump in on the Connery thing because my brain works so fucked up. I've got a Connery, but it's probably not good. We'll do it after. Is it as bad as your Dreyfus? It's worse than my Dreyfus. <laughs> You're the man now, dog. Your mother, Trebek. Fanny Forrester. My, yeah. my Sean Follow Connery. Me, Trebek. You're, you're, my Sean Connery is on, is on fucking Jeopardy. I, it's just 
all I hear is the, you know, is is the goddamn Below Saturn. Be Trebek, you're my now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, Connery. So this is, is this is the best. This is the best part. When Elliot Ness says, I want to get Capone. I don't know how to do it. And when Sean Connery says, you want to know how to get Capone? They pull a knife. You pull a gun. He sends one of yours <laughs> to the hospital. You send one of his to the morgue. That's the Chicago way. The way he, that he just, uh, yeah. that's why Sean Connery is a badass. Mm-hmm. That's how you get Capone. Now do you, now do you want to do that? Or are you ready to do that? I'm offering you a deal. Do you want this deal? I have sworn to capture this man with all the legal powers at my disposal, and I will do it. Well, <laughs> the Lord hates a coward, Malone says. Do you know what a <laughs> blood oath is, Mr. Ness? Yes. Good, because you just took one. <laughs> and I, I just love how he's like, he puts one of yours in the hospital, you put one of his in the morgue. Yeah. He's not fucking around. It's a one-upper. And I for fucking sure. love that. Like, are you ready or not? Are you ready or not? Let's go. Yeah. I just, that, the, the passion in that scene, I just love that. And it, and it is that it's like, if you, how committed are you to a cause? Yeah. And I think you can ask yourself that of anything you start. Yep. How committed are we to this? Totally committed because we're fucking here on a Sunday talking shit. But I don't really want to go to the morgue or. No, no, but well, I'm not, you're not going to one up me by going on a radio station, are you? Uh, I don't know. Which one is it? Mm. Like Sirius XM? KFU. <laughs> no fucking idea. KFU. Well, if if Kung if, Fu? if Sirius X and Liquid Metal calls, oh yeah, we're both going. Oh yeah, if if, if I could co-host with you hosting, I would do that in a heartbeat. Or Hair Nation. I would never host. I would only be your co. That's your wheelhouse, man. I you would be the coast of the coast. metal metal everything. I would totally be the coast. The co coast. <laughs> I'd be a cojones. I yeah. Hey, l- hello, Liquid Metal. Would you like to hire Christopher and myself? And just like uh, Jose Mangan, I'm half French, half Mexican. Hello. Really? Yeah. You're Frexican. F- uh, cracker with beans. What up? Are you Mensch? Are you Mensch? Or are you Frexican? Uh, I think you should be Frexican. Uh, I would not be knowing. I mean, I Mensch. You know, Mensch is in like Yiddish, right? Mensch is like a man. It's like a guy. It's a German, Germanic. So that's a nice way to say it. But I'd rather call you a Frexican. Sure, Frexican. <laughs> That's a weird fucking word. It sounds like somebody with freckles. You're the man now, dog. That's all I know. You're going to go to the rock. We've got a man down. Man down. Oh, that's... That sounds That's like... the scene that I need to add. Which one? We've got a man down. Piper down. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. That's yours. That's one of yours. Can I... I'll do it, but it's yours. Dude, it's I'll so it you, funny bro. how much Felicia hates that scene, dude. Uh, Whatever. At, uh, How could you not fucking like? Dude. Dude. Heed. <laughs> Move it. Heed. No, it's. He's like, it's, he's like an orange dude, on a toothpick, no, that boy. There's two scenes. He goes, head, pants, now. Well, he goes, heed, pants, now. And then he goes, head, paper, now. He goes, heed. Oh, I know. I'm just, oh, yeah. head, pants, heed. now. Heed. He's like an orange on a toothpick, that boy. Last week, we went up north and played golf. And of course, I Bluetooth my speaker in the golf cart to the phone, and we're waiting on the tee boxes. <laughs> these slow people in front of us, so I get that bagpiper scene with the two Scottish guys <laughs> at the wedding. If you want my the body, ball. and you think I'm, and I crank it all the way up. I'm like, hey, Felicia, come here. <laughs> she comes over to the cart and goes, come. bagpipe solo, <laughs> and she she hears it, and she goes like this. And she walks away. <laughs> she didn't say a word, dude. And I was giggling like a crazy Come person. Come on, darling, let me know. Rod Stewart's the greatest. <laughs> He's gonna said, crush it like a worm. And then, and then he, oh, we've got a piper down. Piper down. A, a piper down. Piper down. Heed. Move it. <laughs> oh, he's like Sputnik, that boy. And then Circle, Steve, Steve pointy goes. Apart. Steve goes. He's gonna cry himself to sleep on a huge pillow. <laughs> My favorite part of that. Don't worry. He's going to cry himself <laughs> oh, to sleep dude. on his big pillow. And me and Steve are just laughing. Pillar. And Felicia's like. <laughs> 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 well, it's just so funny because how much she hates it. Right. It's just, totally. Uh, 
I, she's the best. Well, I'm glad because I'll make that your three because oh, you man, needed to fill a couple. Fine, that no, is the I best. Found, I thought oh, you did? One. Oh, never mind. Well, it's just, he, he's its own. Look, oh, I'm going to say best scene so in I any movie. Axe murder, just to clarify. Best movie in any, best scene in any movie ever is it's, him at the TV just yelling at that boy. <laughs> He ain't moving. He's like an orange and a toothpick. It's got that its boy. own. He's got his own gravity and everything. He's like Sputnik, spherically at pointy in parts. He's gonna cry himself to sleep on his big pillow. I just love like oh my and god. And the way they the spell thing. pillow with pillow. an a on the end. A yeah. H, I think. Pillow. 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 It's like gonna cry himself to sleep on his big pillow. That's one I'm gonna have to watch soon. Well, that was your number three. Was uh, uh, sure. gangst- No, no, no. Whatever, three was dude. Untouchables, right? Yeah. Three was your Untouchables. So now we're on number four. Because you're Frexican. Yes. I'm, this is my next scene. Yeah. The opening scene of Team America World Police. America. Fuck yeah. You know freedom costs buck oh five. I do. <laughs> so if America. no one's ever seen the scene, it's like the best because it, it's, it shows this square in Paris. And there's all this little stuff going on, and you know you're going into the movie with Muppets, with puppets anyway, mar- marionettes. And you see the scene with this marionette thing, so you think that's what it is. And then they pull back the scene, and it's a marionette operating the marionette behind the little thing. Fucking genius, first of all. This, the beginning, it's, it, you start giggling before you can even start, like, stop. You haven't even, you haven't even popped your first popcorn yet, and you're on the ground already laughing at that scene alone. And then Durka Durka, Muhammad Jihad, Muhammad Jihad come out and they start shooting everybody. Fucking the plane, the airplane, the car comes in. They fucking blow Paris the fuck up. He's like, I'll get him, Gary. And he knocks out the leg of the Eiffel Tower. The whole Eiffel Tower is like. But what song's playing? I forget. Isn't it in America, fuck yeah? Yeah, I think it is. I think the whole thing is that, but it, I don't remember. Coming to save the motherfucking day now? Yeah. Come save the motherfucking day now. So lick my butt and suck on my balls. America. Fuck yeah. yeah. So, like, so then they, then he tries to hit him and the guy ducks out of the way and the Arc de Triomphe is just rubble. And, like, the whole fucking city. So they get the one, they get the guys, finally. And there's three dead jihadists in the pool, like in the little. Sure. Whatever. And the guy looks, and all the French people, all the Frexicans out there that are half Mexican and half French as well. Because there's a lot in France? Well, maybe they're vacationing in Paris at this time. Because that's where they want to go. They could be. Well, I wouldn't want to make, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't vacation in the other half of your heritage. You mean Cabo San Lucas? Oh, shit, that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. But not Punta Peñasco. Eh. We've been to Puerto Peñasco. Oh, yeah? Puerto and Punta. Punta and Puerto. What about Cancun? Cancun. Cancun? I don't know. You got Can- I got a canker sore. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, so <laughs> everything is in rubble. All the French people are just like a gas on the thing. Like. Their, and the, their jaws have dropped. Yeah, and the guy looks around and he looks like, you're welcome, France. And he just takes, it's fucking just classic. Just how much of a dick we are. To you people. mean the United States? The United States can be dicks to people for sure. For shizzles? That also, yeah. Is there a problem with my microphone? I, I'm watching you like adjust it in a very uncomfortable way. No, because I moved in my chair. Oh, okay. That's uh, all. As long as it's work functioning properly, because I don't want you to have a non-functioning arm. <laughs> He's swallowing his microphone. <laughs> So that was mine. Team America, America is my fourth one. And it's when they just blow everything up in the beginning. And then they're like, you're welcome. That sounds like such an American thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sir, in the back. Uh, why would you not pick the um, scene? I have a sub question. What question do you think I'm going to ask? Them fucking. No. Oh. Because that's my second favorite scene, him, him taking a dump on her stomach. Whoa, fuck. <laughs> in the unrated version. I forgot. I didn't yeah, even know totally. that, that was a, I didn't know there was a poop scene. I think there's I'm going to ask, why did you not Sorry. pick the scene of, I'm so ronery. I'm so ronery and sad. Why is so everyone so fucking ronery. stupid? And he goes, why is so everyone so fucking stupid? <laughs> I'm so ronery. And so sad, Rhea I'm so 
Rongry inside Rio Road. Nobody rubs me. And maybe, just maybe, sitting on my rito road. <laughs> I'm oh, it's, uh, and I'm really fit, but nobody seems to realize it. <laughs> Why did you not pick what's That's his name? Some or the Alec Baldwin scene? Oh, <laughs> man, damn it. Or dicks fuck assholes, but they fuck <laughs> pussies too. Why did you not pick the? What, I forgot his name. It's Kim Jong Un. Un. Kim Il, Jong Un. Ill. Un was the dad, or the no? Is ill was the dad? It's before the other one. It's the, it's the first. The one. the one before the one that we yeah, have now. The, yeah, correct. Before so, the other megalomaniac. The first megalomaniac. Why didn't you pick that scene with him singing alone? I just saw at the beginning of that because I feel like America sucks. Well, they just stick their nose in shit a All lot the of time. time. I, I, that's also, there's also layers to that because we're also asked to stick our nose in shit and then we okay. do it and then we get yelled at for it too. Okay. So, but we do stick our nose in shit. We fuck things up and then we say, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, yeah. little thing like, okay. I just thought it was funny. Just, you know, saying blowing up France is also funny to me. Not that I would condone it, but like France. Not condone French blowups. Yeah. Dolls. <laughs> No, the blow-up dolls are acceptable, which we'll get into Sex later. bots, what? We'll get into autopilot later, don't you worry. Ooh, hey now. Yeah, so that was my uh, fourth one as a team member. But okay. I believe that your your scene is an excellent scene as well. Yes, I saw Ronry. There's so many scenes out there, people. I mean, what do you want us to do? We only have like 14 hours to fill. <laughs> we're an hour in. I know. Almost an hour in. And we've got uh, four. Well, we're on. you're on your fourth. Sure. Go. Yes, I'm going to go uh, with something a little more serious. Um, a movie that I, um, I Tyson introduced me to, my dear departed friend. A movie called Into the Wild, based on a true, based on the true story of a young man, twenty-two year old young man died in nineteen ninety-two. Uh, Christopher McCandless, who just walked the earth, just took off. He died at what age? Twenty-two. How old was he when he left? Twenty-two. Or 20. Who's committed suicide? No, he died in the Alaskan outback. Yeah. Because he ate the wrong berries. Well, and All right. Well, I want to hear your scene. So before, so we, scene before is, we pick it apart. This young man, sure. was dis- he got his bachelor's degree, very good student, disenchanted with uh, the world that he had to, I don't want to get a job. I, I don't want to do that. So the scene is, um, yes, sir, go ahead. Check mark, go. Just from that. Sure. Just you saying he didn't want to get a job, whatever. It pops right in the scene from uh, Say Anything. Oh, yeah. I don't want to sell anything <laughs> manufactured or bought. I don't want to buy anything sold or manufactured. I don't want to ma- I don't want to buy anything sold or bought or manufactured or whatever. Yeah, cr- that I just whole pretty, scene with his dad, I just want to date your daughter, I sir. just want to hang out with your daughter, sir. <laughs> I just want to hang out with that's, your daughter. Damn. Fuck, that's a great... It that is. is that, but, but this, they kind of tie together because they're both those, uh, fuck that moments. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Anyway, so, sorry. So um, he's in his little Datsun 210 or some shit driving across... He's, I think he's in the Arizona desert and uh, this like flash flood comes down this area, kind of like a monsoon and his, his, he's in the car and a car gets swept away and he gets stuck in a dry lake area. A wash area. Yeah. Almost. And the car stuck. So he gets his stuff in his back, his big backpacking backpack, gallon of water, a water jug strapped to his belt. He gets to this big 55 gallon drum and he lights his, all his cash and his driver's license and his social security card, he lights them on fire. There's no words, just some light music and him. You see his hands and some matches and he's lighting. Basically he's lighting his attachment to the physical, to the world that we society as we know he's lighting that shit on fire. He's lighting his life away. Literally his life. Cause every connection to anything yep. he was, his name is on his license. Yep. Gone. Social security and, card. Right. So boom, any and, identification to the current world. Yeah. And, uh, Tyson and I watched that in like probably, Oh, seven. I never saw it before. And it, that, that scene was in my mind was so liberating. Yeah. I like, that's something I wish I could do. I think, we, I think a lot of us wish we yeah. could do that. If and then we, we've died at 22 after trying well, to yeah. leave at 22. And we don't, none of us we realize we can't do it. Right. But the fact that you've been like, Hey, you, it gives you that liberation of, hey, I don't, 
I don't want to pay my bills. I don't, I don't want these responsibilities of sitting in a cubicle or I don't want these responsibilities that, that I didn't ask for this shit. You want to? You don't want to be anchored to anything. Correct. Like that. Yeah, because everything is a weight. Correct. It's, it's holding you down from being your. Correct. The dude basically just walked the earth. That's all he did. But he walked for a year. I don't. I'll have to look it up. I, 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 he I'm died curious. very, very young. So, but he could also done it for three years. You know what I mean? Like if yeah, he left yeah, at yeah, nineteen yeah. So, and he died at twenty two, I'm totally right, cool. Right, with right, that. Right, I don't. Right, right. I just don't know the movie that right. well, but I can. Just the way you're painting it, I can picture this. He died very young. So. I'm it was just released in 07. I thought, I thought the guy survived and was no, still kind no, of No, no, no. He died something. in the Alaskan outback. In fact, just a month ago. So he, at the, towards the end of the movie, he found a school bus in the Alaskan outback. A month ago, the school bus was removed by the Alaskan government. Because tourists kept going there and it was difficult to get there and difficult to get out. And people, I don't think, I don't know if anybody died, but people kept getting hurt trying to get there. And right. it was a major, because people kept reading the book. It's like trying to do the trails. Like yeah. following people's trail. Yeah, What's that correct. one trail that you know? Well, you're John such Muir Trail, yeah, Pacific yeah. Crest Trail. There's all yeah. these trails that are like fucking hard as fuck. Right. Like, dude, if you're not in shape, you are you can't handle the altitude, whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But he found this bus and then he took pictures of himself, like not really selfies, but because in 92, right, right. he put his camera up there and he set the timer and then hunters found him and uh, dead in front of the fucking, in front of the bus. Oh, he died. He there. died at the bus. Yes. Oh, no shit. Cause he ate berries that weren't edible oh, right. and he couldn't, he had all these training techniques to like, okay, he killed an elk or a moose or something uh -huh. and, he, and he learned how to like, okay, I have to skin it right away. I have to take the heart out right away. Right. And then I need to set the meat in a certain area so that it will protect it from flies and this and that. And he didn't do it right. And it got maggot infested. Oh, so he was so living he was starving. Off, he was, he was living off rice and he was living off of berries, but then he, the meat thing didn't work out like he had planned. And then he, he ate the wrong berries and he fucking died. That's the very so, oh, spoiler alert. Sorry. But the heart. book's amazing. And the movie's amazing because it's life lessons about this kid that he took a chance on life. You know what I mean? I love so it. So I'm trying to figure well, out. Well, it's interesting. Joe Rogan has a, at least one or two coasts that I've seen where the guy, where they've done that. They've just, and they know how to do it. And the first couple of years were, you know, you know, on the edge of death yeah. every fucking minute, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. That's where I can respect that. I just don't have the guts. I wish I had balls. Ladies and gentlemen. He uh, was born in 68. He died in August of 92. And his body was discovered three weeks later. That sucks. So he he left, he walked away at what, uh, how old or what year? He walked away in, in uh, la, 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 la. and there's the pictures of him in front of the bus. Oh, shit. After graduating in 90, he traveled across North America, eventually hitchhiked uh, to Alaska in April of 92. And he died when? Uh, September 92. So two years. Fuck. So yeah. So no. He hitchhiked to Alaska. He died like five months he later. He died five months after he got to Alaska. Oh That's my correct. God. So he, Fuck that. He, he, no, he basically you. two years he walked the earth. Look, I I don't like paying my mortgage. I mean, it's not that I don't like well, paying my mortgage. Well, it's not about I don't that. like that my debt makes me makes me a slave to the man. He was, At least he was free for five months. Like, no joke. He was free. Completely free. Could do whatever the fuck you wanted for five months. It's pretty good. He um one one part I forgot was he uh he renamed himself. He picked a different name. W was it Meta World Peace by any chance? N <laughs> no. Because isn't that what Ron Artest called? Him? Yeah. I'm sorry. Alexander Supertramp was his other name. I think it would have been better if it was like Yusuf Muhammad, like uh, Cat Stevens, fucking sure. Anyway, it's me. very different to be like, hey, Fuck that. I don't want to, I'm, I'm young. I, I don't want to fit into the mold. In 1992, I do not want to fit into the mold that my parents, and he loved his parents. They never, they never, they never argued. They never, and his parents were painted as good people that raised him well, hmm. but he didn't want to fit what into the, the mold. Yeah. You know, the guy graduated college. Right, that's what I'm saying. He, who, who has the, 
enlightenment to gra- to recently graduate within two years of graduating college saying none of this is right for me. Yeah. That's and the balls. That's dude. bold. Because I think that shit, but I don't do it. I don't have the guts, man. Exactly. I I'm a pussy. I just don't have the courage to do something like that. I wish I did. Why do you I love how I'm like, my last one was what? Which one did I even Revenge of the Nerds? Revenge of No. That was me. I'm just no, I know. Oh, Team America blowing everything up, and I'm laughing. They're like, now I'm going to go into the wild when he burns his thing. It's very liberating. And then we're going to go back to uh, <laughs> the next one. You got any serious ones? How come I got two serious no! ones and you don't? That's fine. I don't have a single fucking serious you one. You want to steal my serious make one? Me cry. No, fuck that. Well, hey, hey. One of my serious, my, my serious ones is in your top 10 list from the previous podcast. Okay. Great. You, so you want to steal it? No. Don't. You mean like I gave you aliens on the first pick? Is that like that? Is it like that gifting? Like, don't yes, give me a so- fucking scene. Don't let me give you a movie and you give me back a scene. That's like, oh, hey, bro, I love you. I'm going to give you a hundred bucks. And you're like, hey, man, I found a dollar for you. Fine. Fuck I, won't, you. I won't give you the dollar, bitch. <laughs> Go buy your bubble gum. Chew your fucking gum over I, there. Oh, my God, I will. I need to go. So I'm like, so we go Team America. Oh, you're welcome, France. And we're like into the wild. Like, oh, this guy died. Let's like walk the earth, bitches. After. Yeah, walk the earth five months back. And then I, and we're you ready? Yes. No, I don't know how many how many dicks did you suck? Thirty seven. Th- no, bro. Thirty six. Thirty six, including me. <laughs> no. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Hey, I'm not done talking to you. He slams the door, fucking walks out the door, follows her. Hey, don't try to suck any dick on your way to the parking lot. Dude's standing there. He looks at the guy, starts walking, following. Hey, get back here. Fucking clerks, bro. Clerks is, it is just, because like, it's so true how men and women are different. Just right off the bat. Like, she's like, I've only slept with three men, but you suck 37 dicks. And that dude banged 12 women, I think it was. And he's the devil. I'm sorry. I remember 36 is a larger number than 12. I think. I don't know. Anyway. You're good at math and spelling. The spe- spellings. Spellings. So, so he's like, so the whole, if, if no one knows what clerks is, can you dig yourself out from under rock? It's like literally one of about maybe less than a handful of black and white movies I watched. The only reason yeah. it's black and white is because it's cheap to make back then. It was 90 something, right? 90 or whatever. And so the guy's talking to his girlfriend and it, the talk of like exes comes up, right? So he's like, hey, blah, blah, blah. You've been with how many men? I've only been with three. And he's like, so he's been with 12 women and she gets all upset. And he's like, how many, you know, how many men have you been with? Only three. And he's like, well, you know, we'd have fun. I go down on a couple guys. 1994. Thank you. I go down on a couple guys. You're like, how many? Mm, thir- 36. 36? Including me? <laughs> it's like, oh, 37. <laughs> how do you even, how do you even? 37? How do you even how count, you count, how do you count that? Dicks? Like, why do you even know that number? Well, women I mean, would. obviously it's a movie. But... I think women would, because I feel there's an attachment to a penis going into a mouth. I don't know. I have no clue, man. I wouldn't remember 36. But then <laughs> the guy gets mad at her. She storms out of the place that they are, and he follows her out and tries, yells at her, try not to suck any dick on the way to the parking lot. And there's a guy standing on this at the store on the wall, and he just follows her out. He's like, hey, get back here. Just a classic scene. Um, Christopher? Why didn't you pick the scene in that movie where... <laughs> Love- this isn't, I pick a scene and then you say, why did you pick the scene that? Why didn't you pick this scene? <laughs> uh, Go down to the big paragraph. Is this Happy Scrappy the Hero Pup? Yes, I know this one. Yeah. Why didn't you pick that scene? Come, come on, Eileen. Coming in socks. <laughs> I know the whole, th- I know that one. Why? I can't do that. Oh, that one's great. Why didn't you pick the scene? That one's too funny. This <laughs> one. <laughs> So, okay. So, can I, do you want me to point out that scene, how that one works? Would you want to read this paragraph? Do you know this by heart? Follow me. So. Do I get it? Randall, if you haven't seen Clerks, we're just going to fucking spoil it for you. But Randall's on the phone and he's on the phone and this woman carrying a kid walks in and she walks up to, she she goes, 
hey, do you have Happy Scrappy the Hero Pup? He's like, hold on, I'm on the phone with the distributor right now. And then he's like on hold, and he goes, okay, I'm going to need the following movies. Can you start with the first one and just to get me off, get me started? Uh, yeah. Hi, this is RST video calling yes, customer number it. 4352. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to place an order. Okay. I need one of the, each of the following <laughs> tapes whispers in whispers the in the wind. wind. Okay. Each his own. <laughs> uh, is this coming on socks? Put it where, Put it, where it doesn't, doesn't belong. belong. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to continue? Keep going, bro. You're My doing pipes good. need cleaning. Need cleaning. <laughs> All tit fucking volume eight. Yep. I need your cock. <laughs> oh, Ass. by the way, this uh, hello Twitter world. This this video is going to be very explicit. <laughs> <laughs> Ass worshiping rim jobbers. Mm-hmm. Dude, holy shit! This is really bad. There's some really good ones. Yeah. My cunt and eight shafts. <laughs> yeah. This come is why I didn't... clean. Coming in socks, come on Eileen. Come gargling naked sluts. Oh, that's right. Darn come it. buns three. Now here you go. <laughs> come gar- coming in socks. Come on Eileen. Oh shit. Huge black cocks with, with pearly, pearly white, white cum. cum. <laughs> Girls who crave cock. Girls who crave cunt. Men alone to the KY connection. <laughs> Pink pussy lips. Oh yeah, and uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. all holes filled by hard clock. Uh, oh yeah, and what? And, and, and what was that one? Yep. Oh wait a oh, minute. Oh, uh, what was that called again? Oh oh yeah, happy, happy scrappy, scrappy the hero, hero pup. pup. <laughs> that scene was fucking ridiculous. That that was read like that. This is only it's rated R. Yeah, come on, coming in socks. Come on, Eileen. I have to hear it because I hear Randall's voice is going off, but. That scene is just too funny. God, he had to memorize that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's the it, it. When I hear it, I can probably go along with it. It's broken up right now, but it's like, like black cocks with pearly white cum. I knew that one. Like, <laughs> I don't know why. I just knew we that need one. that. We need that snippet right there. Boom. I, I knew it had to be pearly white. It's all. So, um, yeah, clerk. Mine clerks is thirty seven. Chris's happens to be the RST videos. Little girl comes up, happy scrappy. Yeah, I'm on the phone with the distributor. Let me see. Okay, I want all like porno, 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 gay porno, 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 porno. Oh, uh, oh, what, what was that scrappy. one? Happy scrappy. Was that one? Happy scrappy. Okay, the hero pop. Got it. Oh, that's my fucking mall rats. Well, mall rats. That's mall, a great movie well, mall too. Rats, clerks chasing, chasing Amy. Amy. Clerks, clerks. Dogma. I even oh, like fuck. Clerks too. I, I liked. Uh, I, I like that was one very too. Good. Rosario Dawson was great in that. I love. Yeah, her yeah. That. They, she really made a good. Yeah. You know, they, they, held it together. Yeah, and I love she, <laughs> the kid with what would Jesus do underwear? <laughs> the kid. What's his name? One ring to rule them all. <laughs> one ring to guide them all. Yeah. I guess, sorry, mom. So many things. In that, uh, it's your turn, sir. I think we should have the. I'm gonna choose one, and then you go. Why didn't you? <laughs> every time, I think we should do that every. Well, time. when you did that scene, I was okay. like, you didn't pick the scene on the phone with all the porn titles. I'm, I was so surprised. Well, I was hoping to not like. Okay, I curse a lot, and you don't as much as I do. I've been trying to be much better. I'm not good, but I'm being much. I'm trying to be to police myself on the podcast. Cause I think it turns people off that we curse too, that I curse too much. We is not correct. Can I, that I curse too much. Comment about that. Yes, please. Fuck that. Yeah. But what if people don't listen? And then, and then we, we stop recording. We we'll never stop we're recording. Never fucking, stop we're just going to keep going. Fuck you guys. We'll just well, keep wait doing a it. Good. We're good. But Next. See what did <laughs> Kyle from Nebraska? Did he, was he a cusser or a non cusser? Kyle said, I motherfucking want to see every <laughs> goddamn motherfucking scene of movies that you motherfucking like. See, I like Kyle a lot. Yeah, me and Kyle, we the the, the three. Us and three Kyle, boom skis. We're good. We're we're tight. Tight. <laughs> unlike unlike uh, all unlike those, porn those eight shafts in <laughs> in socks. Apparently, socks are not tight. Apparently, because he's been very loose socks. <laughs> and I love my favorite one of that entire title was "Come on, Eileen," because we it's talk about song. Dixie's Midnight Riders. Can you turn the TV off? And we love it. Oh yeah, I can totally Thanks. turn the fucking. It's, TV. It's, is it just, is it giving you epileptic seizures? Ep- epileptic. Epileptic. Sorry. It looks as we had a different movie on there. So it's your turn, sir. Yeah. Uh, oh, before you start, why didn't you choose a different scene? You did. <laughs> I chose the porn scene. <laughs> All right. What's your fifth one? I think we're on five. I don't know, dude. Yeah. Which one? Whichever one we're on. Uh, next is Empire Records. 
Oh, nice call. 1995. Uh, Renee Zellweger, probably her first movie. I know you hate her. Very uh, Gen X, Gen Z. Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally Seattle and gr- fucking stupid. Right, coming out of grunge, because grunge was 90 to 95. Well, it still right, had it was that there. stupid. It was still totally Collective there. soul, fucking Ugh. Mr. Jones, horrible shit music. Run away with dream hill. All right. I want to hear the cat gag at this point, but go. So, um, my favorite scene from that movie is, uh, and I do have a response when you ask me, why did you pick that one, man? Over there. Philly style. (laughs) With the water. And the macaroni and gravy. My favorite scene is when Warren says, who glued these corners down? And AJ says, I did. What the hell for, man? I don't feel I need to explain my art to you, Warren. <laughs> I don't feel like I need to explain my art to you, Warren. Check mark. Yes. You ready for story time? Oh, I am ready. Are you ready for story time? Hey, everybody. We're going to have story time. Everybody gets your head Put your head on big head on your big pillar. <laughs> Go put your head on your big pillar while we have story time. So the I saw that movie in like very late, probably oh five, probably probably the probably probably the day after I sent you that voicemail with the fingernail clippings. <laughs> it's probably the day after that. You son of a bitch. Ah, you're welcome. See, here I go again doing stupid shit. So the Monday after I saw that movie, I got a bunch of quarters. And I took him to work and I was the same. I was the AD or senior manager for all those guys. I had 13 employees and 37, 13 employees, 13, 13 employees. And I, I glued six or seven quarters to the carpet behind fight club Rob's chair. Okay. I, so I got there early, you know, cause I'm psycho and I glued him to the carpet so every time his what chair... What type of glue did you use? Do you remember? Was it Elmer's or was no, it like No, it was crazy? like, it was like, was yeah, cra- it was like super glue. glue? Super, okay. It was clear, super glue. Super so glue. I knew, like, I knew they would be a bitch to get off. So you huffed some and then put some Oh, yeah. Down. yeah. <laughs> I was all <laughs> hopped up, bro. So, um, yeah, I wasn't fucking around. I was all hopped up on caffeine and super glue. It was fantastic. <laughs> so I, I glued a shitload of quarters to the carpet. And it was, I, they were pr- in a pretty good pattern. So you couldn't escape them, right? I was very thorough. Because that's how I am. Christopher, you're about the most thorough person I know. You fuck yeah, dude. If I'm going to do a joke, I, there's going to be no escape, right? <laughs> so when you, they were behind his, his chair. So every time he had to go in and out of his <laughs> desk, he's going <coughs> to. The, ch- the Let chair, me guess. He's going to roll into them. The chair has to. The the wheels, there's like five or six wheels on every chair, right? One, yeah, five five wheels. So th- at least one wheel has to hit at least one quarter, at least, if not two or three or four, that right? That is cruel, man. So then, and Rob's probably like, the, there's like, there was like six guys on that team, maybe? Five guys on that team? And they all sit in, you know, there's two rows of cubes, and Rob is one of the later guys to get in, right? So um, Rob rolls in late. And, you know, it's kind of quiet, and I'm there. Hey, good morning, everyone. You know, whatever. Rob gets in. Hey! <laughs> what the hell? What's up with these... What's up with these fucking quarters? <laughs> and I scoop back in my chair and lean over there, and I... I don't feel I need to explain my art to you, Rob! <laughs> and fucking four rows of fucking people started cracking up, dude. That... Deserves a slow clap, <laughs> sir. That's like, because that's, that's beautiful, man. the kind of shit that I do. I love you, man. That's why we. It's a, it's like I just tinkled in my pants. Oh shit! Watch funny. out, peoples. Look out! That would, I love that one. I because I, I don't feel like I need to explain my art to you, Warren. <laughs> Why do you keep calling me fucking Warren? <laughs> that movie is so rad, dude. That is, that is I, an underrated movie. Oh, yeah, I might go watch that again tonight. We should do underrated movies. I've got a handful of them. Okay. That no one else likes, that okay. only I like. I don't know how they made it. I do like the scene when um, 
Mark eats the brownies, the weed brownies, and he's watching a gore video. And if you don't know who gore is, they're a terrible heavy metal band in these massive outfits. Gore is my favorite. And they go, gore, Mark, you love gore. Why don't you join the band? And then he's on stage and he's high as shit. And he goes, Mark, too bad you have to die. And they eat him. They freaking, they, all the guys in the band start eating him. And then oh he's like, whoa, God. what's in these brownies? I love gore. Gore. They're terrible, dude. They're horrible, they're but they're so horrible. much fun. But they're just a goof band. They're not real, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, well coming off that. Jace. Do you ever go to a gore concert? Uh, they No. They were on a bill of a bunch of bands I was seeing, and I got there too late to see them. So I got there, and then there was a bunch of people covered in weird colored things. Yes. So I that's post squar. Post squar. I got <laughs> there. Sure. I saw the people that were in the <laughs> front twenty rows. Yeah. Okay. So I was trying to lead on to something, but apparently I shot myself in the foot by not preparing this with you. Hey, sir, have you ever seen a band called Metalachi? Hey, many times. Okay. What kind of shirts do you wear to Metalachi Con? Do you wear? Metalachi shirt, like a Metalachi, a pro Metalachi shirt to the concert. Like Fuck it has no. the word on it. No. Why? Because that's against the rules, bro. Right. It's against the rules, isn't it? Yes. That's right. Etiquette, people. Yes. That brings me to my next scene. I yes. was trying to be smooth, but I was about as smooth as sandpaper dipped in glass and covered in broken glass or something. Covered in broken Wood glass. chips. Yeah. Which, sure. About smooth. That was his worst transition. <laughs> worst transition ever. So check mark is your writer, but it's you never fucking wear the shirt of the band you're going to see. Now, this is a known rule going back ages. You never wore the shirt of the gladiator you're going to see. <laughs> Maximus Decimus yeah, like Ma yeah, like first of all, you ran out of letters and you probably couldn't spell so yeah. good. Yeah, leaders of the armies of the yeah, north. You're not like Plato. Like you're not wearing a fucking Plato shirt when he goes and does some speaking engagement, right? This is known eons, my friend, but I don't Millennium? think it was ever really put out. No one's ever captured, encapsulated the, no, you know, it's kind of like a unwritten rule, but a, a movie made it written. I'm excited. Yeah. We put it down. And you know how we started talking about like, I want to be on the record. Yeah. This movie went on the record to completely take, take, uh, take a crap on anyone who'd wear the shirt of the band they want to see. That little known movie. Is called Animal House 2. I mean, I'm sorry. PCU. PCU. I apologize. PCU. Porchester University or politically correct university, whichever way people did it. PCU, guys. Jeremy Piven. John Favreau's in it. That motherfucker's in everything now. And that guy was a nobody back then. He was just some fat, chubby dude in a tank top with dreadlocks. You know his name in the movie? Gutter. Gutter. Not fucking, not roof, not shingle, not roof. gutter. He was a motherfucking gutter. And uh, what's his name? Jeremy Piven with his draws. So anyway, so the story is this. There's a kid who wants to go to this college and he's going on a tour. So he's going before actually, before college actually starts. It's still in the spring from the previous semester, I'm assuming. So draws, Jeremy Piven is trying to pawn off this guy from doing his tour. He's trying to pawn him off on. Gutter, who is played by chubby John Favreau. He's chubby again. It's like he's done a full 360. Welcome back that. to the club. But he's got dreads. And I love him in this movie. He's great. Anyway, so uh, Jeremy Piven walks in with this kid who knows nothing. This like little, you know, bright eyed kid. And he goes, hey, Gutter, I need you to help me out, man. You got to show this kid around. And then Gutter, played by Favreau, is like, oh, bro, I can't. And then Draws is like, can or won't, man. And then Gutter's like, can't. Frog and Toad are open, or the Merkins are opening up for Frog and Toad or friends. I got to psych up for the show. And he goes, so then Jeremy Piven goes, oh, Frog and Toad are friends. That's with the guy from The Clash, right? And then Gutter's like, Burr? and then Draws is like, The Clash. I don't know if you're aware of this, Gutter. But there was music recorded before 1989. No what is this? This. And it's a Merkin shirt. You're gonna you're you're gonna wear this to the show. You're gonna wear the shirt of the band you're gonna see. 
Don't be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. The whole thing. Don't, don't be that guy. Period. Just don't be that guy. It's like don't be a dick, but don't wear the shirt of the band you're going to see. On record at PC. No one else has put it on record since. Or I don't think prior. It was just unwritten. Till me. We. We then. Us. We then added it. All of us. But we we just wanted to write some of the. We wanted to make those unwritten rules that we talked about written. Wearing black and the shirt and all that. So, PCU. You're going to wear this. You're going to wear the shirt of the band you're going to see. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. That's all we ask. How many motherfuckers? I've seen it here. It's like, I've got a shirt from uh, some, who, who were Incubus. I remember going to an Incubus concert in Arizona. It was 116 that day. It was. <laughs> it was probably 116 that day. And people were wearing like Incubus like 95 shirts or Incubus 99 or whatever whenever they came out. Like what? You you knew them back then or great, you had a shirt from back then. Congratulations. But why are you wearing it to the No. 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 Off. Off with their heads and off with their shirts. And especially the ones that are like definitely off with the shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. As a single gentleman, you should definitely want them to take their shirts well, off. Well, yeah. You should want every woman that goes to a concert wearing the shirt of the band they're going to see. And you should be like, I have, we have it on written record that you, you're you not to do this. You're in violation, remove, violation. of rule seven. <laughs> rule seven. So that's my PCU. There are a lot of, there are a lot of things in PCU because it is literally Animal House too, but. That's what I with which I went. Thanks, man. You know, I don't I think, think I've ever seen the movie. We should watch it together. Okay. And uh, it's, it's funny because I came up with that rule on my own and I never saw that movie. Correct. I didn't I had that which rule is well very before. Very strange. I went to concerts when I when, when I was like in high school, so I had yeah. no idea about this movie until after. Yeah. I have never seen it. And then yeah. you mentioned the rule to me and I was like, "Wait a minute." Yeah. Cuz somebody else mentioned it to you in a comment. Correct. Don't be that guy. Don't be that and guy. And I was like, "What?" Yes. So and I did kind of explain, not explain, yeah. but well, just kind of like, like give you some back And context. of course I know Jeremy Piven and yeah. you know, Favro, so from Favreau. the Iron Man and from everything else. The Iron, well, you were him in one of yeah, your episodes. Yeah, I was one of the he's You were the I'm driver. The, I'm the sandwich guy, <laughs> obviously. So, you're duh. the chef and the driver, my yeah. friend. Yeah. So that's my one. But we'll have to watch it. It's a fun it's it's light enough to just kind of crank through. Yeah, it's probably only an hour and a half. It's probably yeah. super stupid. He gave his love a cherry also. Sure. He broke his lady's cherry. Oh, dear Lord. Sorry. That was a mistake. Okay. Right, what you got? What you got next? Ugh. I don't even remember where we're at. I'm just having Who fun cares? talking with you, man. I'm just, I'm just enjoying this time with you and with, uh, with the podverse. The podverse. Is that a, did we just make up a new word? Yes. Oh, the podverse. So I don't I'm going to go um, with my favorite lightsaber battle from possibly the one of the worst Star Wars movies. Stupid Phantom Menace. The battle with... Uh, that is arguably the worst movie. Correct. It is arguably at least, what, one of two or... Th- it's the worst one. It, it's, to me, it's, it's the, worst the worst one. It's the worst one. And fucking bravo. I'm sorry. Because, yes, as dumpster fire of a movie that was. Oh, yeah. That fucking scene that you're talking about, and I'll let you paint it, because I'm just going to shut up. um, If if the character who shall be remain nameless is removed from the movie, I think the movie could be okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. JJB? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If JJB... Misa, Misa. Yeah. If, la, 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 la. If Misa... La, 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 la. If Misa... Burr. 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 If Misa not over here, maybe movie good. Misa, yeah. Misa no like a movie. Shut yes, if up, that JJB. guy is completely removed yeah. from, the, from the movie, or <laughs> would the movie be okay? Yes. Would it be two one, and a half stars versus one? One hundred percent not shit. Correct. It would be less yes, you go, sir. Okay. I, mm, yes. Ooh, p- ooh, yes, check ooh, mark. Ooh, go. Ooh, ooh, oh, oh, I pick you. Um Mr. Peralta. Yes, sir. Uh I have question. Yes, go. Um I think I lost thought. Oh, it's gone now? Train of thought. I have question. All the train stations. The JJ. Oh, have you seen movie fanboys? No. 
Oh, movie fan blitz. We will talk after. Okay. Go. Yes. So that movie's horrid. Horrid shit pile. There's a second character that actually needed to be removed for that movie to be okay. And I think, I hope you know. The big fat Gungan? Not, okay. The character didn't have to be removed. It had to be replaced with another actor. There was a bad actor in that movie. It's like a lot, dude. The fucking kid. Oh, yeah, he's terrible. Young Anakin. He was fucking horrible. Ruined that. that, Oh, yeah. That and Jar Jar. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was bad. Those two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, Caden Christensen wasn't awful, but he he was serviceable. And I know that Lucas is very, like, you're standing on this X and doing it exactly the way he wants it. You saw Natalie Portman look, like, dry as fuck. Like, she looked awful. That's not how she acts. It was guaranteed a direction thing. It was the way that Lucas wanted him to be. She was terrible in all the movies. Right. But she she's not so, a bad person in so movies. She was so robotic. Yes. It and was I, bad. And they're all like that. And you see that in Christensen and all those. Because I think Lucas is very like, you will do at, like in this exact order. And you don't get to be, it's his thing. And I get it. It's his. It's his baby. He's going to direct the way he wants. I feel like that's what I suffered agree. in that. It's poop. But, okay. So Regardless. Now we're in the Phantom Menace. The scene that I think is phenomenal um, and the music is just fucking kick ass. And it's Williams, I think, still, right? I believe it is John Williams. I, I, I would need to look, but... John L. Williams? I don't know. John Lawrence Williams. <laughs> I don't fucking know his name. I don't know. Uh, is the scene with Darth Maul with the dual-headed... Dildo? Sided? Dual-headed <laughs> lightsaber. <laughs> um, <laughs> How does that always go back to sex with you? Because um, I have this friend named Teresa. Look. And she's a terrible influence. My friend Christopher is single, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Enough said. Uh, <laughs> Continue. So, uh, <laughs> Darth Maul and Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan Kenobi, the young, the young ones, um, and the two Jedi's are chasing the Sith, Darth Maul, who's probably my one of my two favorite Star Wars characters of all time. The red and black face with all the thorns on his bald head and the dark robe. He's, he says nothing. He says three or four words in, in all the movies. And he's, he's, his presence is fucking sick. You mean all the movie? All, well, he's in, he's in... No, he's not. Yes, he is. He's in Solo. Okay. He says... Okay, okay. He says two sentences or some shit. I'm... Okay. Anyway. Two sh- I thought you meant the 9 G. I thought you were talking about the Star Trek. In the Nineage. Nueve <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, the Star Wars battle. The, the the Jedis chase them down this hallway, and the hallway has these force fields that make them stop. And the way that Obi-Wan and uh, Qui-Gon are stopped along the way and how different they react and how Qui-Gon, who's the master Jedi, stops and kneels and he meditates. And it, he just becomes so quiet and he's just becomes so at peace but Obi-Wan who's younger paces back and forth and he's, he wants to pounce as soon as that door is open he's, as does Darth uh, yeah as does Darth the bad is guy. like watching and just pace like yes. he's wearing fucking holes yes. into the like the, yes. into the ground into the floor correct and then as um as the as the force fields open one guy gets to go by, and then the next for- they run, and the next force field comes down. As that goes on, and then the two Jedi are f- are battling lightsabers with uh, with the evil Sith guy, right? And the music, and they're going around this. There's a pit in the middle, and they're going back and forth. And finally, how Darth Maul puts a hole through Qui Gon, and then how Obi Wan cuts Darth Maul in half. I-, I just think it's it's a phenomenal, phenomenal scene. I agree. I argue it is the most action packed star Wars scene in its time frame. Just, just that, just how it was just such as choreography to yeah, it. Yeah, it was yeah. beautiful. It was beautiful watching that different color lightsabers, you know, the different one guy's different got long styles. hair, one guy's yeah. got short hair, just a different way. You know, it's they two on, things. it's two on one. And it's yeah. weird. Cause you're like, the thing that went through my head is like, I thought Jedi, is that unfair? Do Jedi's fight like I? There's a code, right? There's this whole Jedi code. Is, right, is like two on one Jedi code. Like I didn't. I, 
I've never gone like I'm sure there's some nerd out there that knows like every code or whatever written in every Jedi book or wrote sure them from the movies or whatever. But like I always thought that was an unfair part when I watched it. I'm like, that shouldn't ha- he should wait till the other guy got beat and then jump in to face him one on one because that point. would be like cur- like it seems like that would be the Jedi way. But you're right, it is beautiful the way that just. <laughs> Absolutely. And not annoying sound. That was not a terrible lightsaber uh, representation. That's not bad. Well, it's when they touch each other. Yeah, I got that. Okay, cool. It's way better than knife and fork touching. Oh, that was the worst. And <laughs> that was the worst part of my movie experience at Phantom Menace. <laughs> the baby crying the, in the there theater. There was a baby in a fucking theater. Bastards. And it was still better than Jar Jar Binks. But, um, but, oh, is that in there? I don't, I didn't put that sound in there. The Jar Jar Binks sound? No, rim shot. I got, rim, I added rim shot, my friend. Damn it. I added one. We're going to get, you, you guys are going to hate us. <laughs> this, this, the sounds, the sounds that we have for you. But no, you're absolutely right. That scene is gorgeous and it sucks because it is bookended by shit. Garbage. Absolute garbage. For even the fight on the with the whoa, 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 with the shielding thing, that whole fight with the Gungan stuff, even that that was awful. But I loved I loved the robot tanks and I loved the robot army. But I didn't like the or, the bio the organic defenders. It seems it just seemed stupid. Fa- how about that? How about favorite like f- fighting scene? Mine's Hoth. Mine's obviously definitely Hoth, dude. It's definitely that, right? Hey, come on, it's got to be with the adats coming. Yes, yeah, fucking gorgeous, brilliant. All right, sir, move it along. We're gonna mo- move along. Move along. Nothing to see here. These aren't the episodes for which you're looking. Um, because you haven't done this one yet, because I want to jump on the back of yours when you do it. So I okay, I've got this one because I got one I'm gonna want to end on for me. Um, 40th anniversary of airplane, sir. I don't know if you know, it was 1980. Jesus. I just hit my head again. Damn it. I hate when I do need that. smaller headphones. Did bro. you know that the red zone is for immediate loading and unloading? <laughs> yeah. Don't park in the white zone. I was wondering the difference between the zones. <laughs> it's about me having an abortion. Isn't it? <laughs> Lawrence. Look, no, Betty. <laughs> Betsy, Betty, Betty, Betty. It was <laughs> Vernon. Vernon. It was Vernon. Vernon. <laughs> I knew it was a V. But it was still. Betty? Oh, shit. <laughs> it's Betty. It is Betty. Is it's it absolutely Betty, Betty and okay. Vernon, yes. Oh, fuck. Anyway, so airplane. See, it's the 40th anniversary. The reason this scene sticks in my head is because as a child, I did not understand it. So I was born in 74. So by the time it probably made the move, like TV is probably 85, probably. Sure. Maybe, maybe just under that. Yeah, 83. Know, something like that. Or definitely on video by yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could go to, Max. You go to Blockbuster. You could go to <laughs> Happy <laughs> Sappy Video. Happy Scrappy. RST. Yes. RST Video with Randall. Yes. Don't do it. Oh, I'm not going to do Socks it. Socks right. and stuff. Socks and stuff. Um, and the scene that I remember that always cracked me up because I was a kid and I guess maybe I liked inflatable things. I don't know. Um, uh, what? When they activate the autopilot. And the autopilot is just basically this inflatable thing. So they pull in and this thing that blows up and then it just holds the yoke and it's just this <laughs> blow up thing. Okay. And you'll hopefully you see this on the video, but then there's an incident in which the pilot co-pilot gets punctured or something and it starts losing air and they need to fill it back up. And there's this manual valve. And you, I remember just from like the, the old days, the valve with the, like the life vest, you yeah. always had the one that was like on your shoulder. Well, this one happened to be located in the crotch of the, of the co Of course it did. So the stunningly gorgeous flight attendant, who was a stewardess back then, just of course so she you was. know, she was a stewardess, but the beautiful flight attendant gets down on her knees and starts manually inflating the manually inflating the air, the tube on the autopilot. (laughs) And the scene then comes up where as he's being inflated, 
he has this shit ending grin on his face and he's like <laughs> So, as a kid, I had no fucking idea what that meant. And then I watched it one time as an adult. Er, well, after I started, you know, I met ladies and then got oh. yeah, women, women, women. That's not a feminine. That's a womanist, Tom. Um, nice scene selection, sir. From PCU. So th- I just remember that scene and it always gave me a chuckle, but I didn't understand the context until I was old enough to understand that she was blowing the blow up doll blowing. Yeah. Blowing the blow up doll and his reaction, literally blowing up the doll. It was the final joke of that movie. Cause that, that movie is a joke that keeps on joking. Oh, that yeah. thing is just constant, constant slapstick. I mean, Kentucky fried movie is one that I totally forgot about too. It's just a total, just, Ding, zinger, 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 all well, the way throughout. There's a bunch of those. Yeah, and I had to go with that scene just because I didn't understand it as a kid, and then as an adult, it made sense. So it was like this, it almost like was a second. Oh, cool. It's made me love it even more. You could go, I thought about space balls and how many. A I Jewish mean, princess? <laughs> uh, comb the desert. We yeah. ain't found shit. <laughs> Come on, the guy's got a pick. He's got a, yeah. I mean, there's so many yes. just plain yogurt. Yeah. Oh, the flamethrower. Yeah. Spaceball flamethrower. Kids literally love Spaceball's this one. Spaceball's a flamethrower. They love this one. I mean, they, there's so they, many. There's a toilet. How do you. Back. There's just. There's so many. Yeah. Space, Spaceballs is one. There's a bunch of slapstick movies. Uh, the All the yeah. naked gun ones. Yes. When the two of them, did you bring protection? And they're both wearing full length condoms. You know, and then there's at the very end where I don't remember. And don't who's, call me Shirley. I mean, that's from yeah, airplane, but, right? And right. that's where he was also. But I think did. I think it's the very end of the first one at Dodger Stadium, where the like the villain falls off, and he lands in the parking lot. Enrico Palazzo, where he has to sing the national anthem. I don't, it was like so. I think it's just two and a half because he had to dress up as the opera singer Enrico Palazzo to sing the national anthem. Is that the one where we went to the ball game? Well, and then... remember when 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 <laughs> we didn't, we totally are prepared for this? Yeah, one. no way. I but no, saying. but remember when uh, the guy with the white hair, Shirley? Yeah, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie yeah. Nielsen. Yeah. He's he's the umpire, and yes. he he doesn't call. He yes, doesn't, and he goes. Yeah, he goes. And he goes. Strike. He goes. And then they all strike. Strike. <laughs> they all cheer. Any yeah. question mark? Yeah. But at the end of that, somebody yes. falls off from the third Correct. floor, and he's there's because he's a sniper or something. And then the up, USC yeah. marching band marches <laughs> over the body. Yes. I just thought that was hysterical. Because why? Why USC? Why is that funny? <laughs> On to Victor losers. Fuck you. Bum, 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 Go bum. Penn State. Yeah, buy buy a couple more buy a couple more Heisman trophies. Why don't you? Like, let's just Assholes. buy two or three. You should you have know? said buy another child molester douchebag. I'm not. That's fucked up. I wouldn't say that. It is fucked up. But that fucking Sandusky is a piece of shit. Well, he's of course is a piece of Fuck. shit, but I wouldn't say. Move it along. I know. I love you. But no, on to victory. That's true. And correct. He he started as Enrico Palazzo to get on the field. And then he knocked out the umpire to become the umpire. And he's like, strike? And, then, and the guy didn't throw the ball before he even like, let it go. He was already like saying strike three. Yes. Fucking beautiful. That is a funny scene. And then the marching band. For yes. Because this these guys. Uh, was that OJ? OJ was in the movie. OJ was in one of them. He, I think that was one. Was that, that was two OJ and a half, that fell I think. off? It may have been. I, I don't remember. Look, I, I don't have my Naked Gun trivia here. I, I left <laughs> the board not, game fucker? at home. Naked oh, Gun, the board I le- game. I left the board game at my house, Spaceballs which happens the to be board our game. studio. <laughs> the kids Space, love it. Baseball, still love it. Right. A Jewish princess. Ow, ow, ow. Joan Rivers, she's fucking hilarious oh, even in her death. God. She's fucking so Hated funny. Her. Yeah, I believe that, but she's fucking funny. No. So... I'm going to go with this one because I know what you're closing on, right? I've got like three more. You do? Oh, yeah. sweet. So I'm out after this. Okay. This is one that, uh, well, it happens to be the first movie on, on the island that yep. I took with me. Yeah. The Matrix. The Matrix. The Matrix, because I just could not take your number one, sir. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't have it in my heart. Um. The Matrix is a hugely powerful movie to me now, way more than it was in the beginning. Because, like, it was a cool concept. Like, humans are batteries and blah, blah, blah. Everything's sensory input. And that totally makes sense. And you can go to the scene where the guy's eating the steak, right? And he's like, I know that this is nothing, but it's juicy and tender and ignorance is bliss and all that shit. And 
we've had both some spiritual experiences and some awakenings of some sort, some epiphanies. And we're seeing how this world kind of is crumbling in front of us. We see behind the veil. Like it is like we're in the matrix. Like people are jacked in. You've got people that are, um, they're just doing their job, right? Like I go to work nine to five. I pump out two and a half kids. I have a picket fence with my house and, and my dog. And I have my lovely wife and she does her thing and we do our thing and she, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And like everyone's living in this just washed, whitewashed world. And it feels like everybody's asleep and I'm wide awake and my head's on fire with thoughts and ideas about everything around me and how screwed up it is. And, but like no one's willing to fix it cause they just want to yell about how screwed up. I don't know. It's just all that stuff. It's, I, it's just I really powerful. Dude. And it just goes back to the thing where you go back to the, the scene where Neo played by, whoa, whoa. You should probably go to the, his after that, right? This is a perfect segue. But whoa is there. And he, um, he's given the option of taking the red or the blue pill. And he, he doesn't know. And he knows he know he he's us. I mean, we're, he's curious. He knows, of course. he knows there's something back there. He knows it's fucked up. He just knows it. But Lawrence Fishburne's character, ne- uh, Morpheus is very vague about what answers will come from taking them. Correct. I mean, it's a risk. It's a big fucking risk. And I don't, and like, I feel like that's how we are in this world. It's like, we don't know which way to step. Do we want to wake up or do we want to stay asleep? And that's just always been a really powerful thing for me is just seeing that. So like that whole scene, not, I mean, it looks really cool too when he does like take it and it does all the stuff, but it's like just the meaning behind the red versus blue. Like you have choice at this moment. You can choose to take the don't be a dick route <laughs> or you can just do what everybody else is doing. Very well said, dude. Thanks, man. Very, I, I it's, yes. It's super powerful. I get it, man. I, I very, very well said. And then, and then it makes me wonder whether you have the chance to take the blue pill many times or if it's once you've taken it on here that it's never going to, the option doesn't ever happen again. Like it's a closed door. But I don't feel like that's the case. I just wonder that. Though. You mean you can't unsee? Well, not that. Uh, we've already, uh, yeah, we can't unsee what we've, like we can't, can't unexperience. You can't, what's the, but I, what's the expression? You can't. The, the Oz curtain guy? Yeah, you can't put the, yeah. You can't You've seen un, the man behind the curtain. You, you can't, can't put the toothpaste back him. in the tooth. Okay. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Right. Those types of things. But yeah, please pay no mind to the man behind the curtain, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've seen where the puppet strings are and all that. I That definitely. But I'm saying, I wonder if you've chosen to not pay attention to sleep. You know what I mean? If you is it still back there much, somewhere? Right. How much harder it is to get out? Because like I feel like the best option is on the first chance to to wake up. Because once you continue that cycle about sleeping, I don't know. Yeah, that one just mend a lot. I dig it. That is all. I yield to you, sir. I yield to the man from California. What is up, SoCal bitches? Um, s- somewhat along the same lines. Um. I have a scene from V for Vendetta where uh, V, the main character, the dude in the mask and the amazing hair, wig. <laughs> it's a beautiful wig. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's cro- It's cut so oh, straight across nice and bangs. silky. They're fantastical. Uh, where he is in the, um, he's actually in the old man outfit talking to the uh, two police detectives and he's talking about the way that the I couldn't find the actual words on the IMDb. The the way that the government utilizes fear and propaganda to mm, push forth their own agenda. To manipulate things. Yes, to 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 I would say use fear for control. And use fear for power. And uh, they referenced um, a quarantine zone. And they referenced a vaccine. St. Mary's flu or something yeah, they came they, up they, with? Some... Yeah, they, they referenced a vaccine. And they referenced... This movie came out in 2005. And, and I know we mentioned this a few podcasts ago. 
the number of parallels between that movie and what is happening in July 2020 is ridiculous. How the, the governments around the world at every level, whether local, state providence, federals, and the medias, whether it's local or nationals, or in whatever country, it's it's disturbing at how that movie touches on what's happening right now. When they say the word quarantine, when they say the words fear, and they say the words control and power, that's if if you slow down and you really listen to what the news is saying, that's it is eerie. And it bothers me. And that movie's that scene is powerful. It's similar to what you said about The Matrix. And are we just batteries? Are we just going about our lives? Or is there something else going on? Do we need to, hey, man, be awake. Be cognizant. Be a, aware of what is happening around you. Don't believe everything you see and read. Be aware. Have your eyes and ears open of what's really going on. Don't believe everything. Read more than just one source. Question everything. Question everything. Including my dumb ass. You know, maybe I was wrong about Batman June 23rd, 1989. I wasn't. But maybe I was. <laughs> but I wasn't because I double checked it and I already knew I was right. But I wasn't. You weren't incorrect. So you were 100% But double correct. check that shit. Maybe I was full of crap. You know? Yeah. Well, you... I, Look, 99.8% of the shit that comes out of my mouth, please vet. No, no you're, you're a pretty smart fucking dude. Yeah, but I, I cross things. I admit, I'm, I streams. make mistakes. I cross things. I don't cross streams, bro. No one, you don't cross streams. And thank you for sharing that because that is very powerful, especially in today's time of... This makes it easy to change over a type of leadership that people don't like currently. For example, there's a lot of people who aren't happy with the current leadership, and this makes an easy way to change that. Because one of the easiest ways to change leadership is to have bad economic time at the time of election. Or bad whatever. Right, but specifically bad economic time. Well, wars wars actually people keep people in I know. But if they're unhappy with the war, like Vietnam, get that guy out of here. Yeah, that was If they don't like this war, that you know, if they're unhappy with what X, Y, Z, you know, oh, COVID is all this guy's fault. Get him out. Right. But for example, Johnson didn't lose. Uh, I don't think he ran the second term, did he? He decided not not to run. Right. He decided not to run. So technically that was an up for grabs election. For example, in Vietnam, if I were to use a bad war. Correct. I'm curious how it would have turned out if he he had run. I'm curious how that would have turned out. Right. Because that would have been. That's a good point. Yeah. That would have been. Because if you look at like Bush won. Bush number one, not Bush won. Like he did win. But I mean, Bush, the first Bush. He he won so decisively in Kuwait. It was like March. If he had extended that through October, he probably would have won re-election. But he won so early in that year that of the election that they forgot about like the war part when he lost to Clinton, for example. There wasn't a war going on, right? But he had there oh, was. The, Do you know what I'm talking about? The Bush Persian Senior. Gulf War. Yeah, Bush won. The yes. first the Persian first Bush. Gulf War. Correct. Okay. I'm sorry. I I apologize if I didn't if I wasn't clear. Okay. Persian Gulf War, the the one where we Saddam won in three invaded days. Kuwait. We won Correct. in three days. Correct. We yes. just crushed them. Yeah. And then that was just the hundred hour war. Correct. Yes. And and then by the time that was over, people had so forgotten about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they could have if I mean politically speaking, extending that war would have actually been benefit. Correct. Politically we beneficial. Should, right. Not good. We should have invaded later. For right. His or we should have defended career. later. Right. Or not finished so quickly. Yes. Should have just sat there and waited, like, and not done anything. Just sat there for months. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but because, yeah. like, let's be honest, FDR, obviously, World War II, you were not. He was not going to get not not reelected. That he was, was on a, his fourth term. I know, but you. But I understand that. What I'm saying is, he wasn't going to get not get reelected after the first, second, and third because of the war. I mean, he was in that war. Yeah. They weren't going to change over leadership in the midst of that. It was just too deep. They were too, too deep. Too risky, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah, I would yeah, feel yeah. like most people are like status quo because they had like, let's finish it out. Yeah, exactly. And you're right. There are bad wars, but we don't, I don't, we don't have an indication of if there was a bad war during an election. I haven't seen, I have seen it just with economy. 
And what's the best way to fucking destroy an economy is everybody staying home and not buying anything. I mean, it's pretty easy. I'm, you know, just yeah, I understand. correlative, not right. causation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love that scene. Thank you for sharing that one because that, that one does, like, just the simplicity of it. Like, you realize you're being controlled. You realize that you have nothing. Yeah, you're asleep. You're in control. You're controlled, you know. It's how those are the ones that we go to, right? <laughs> we resonate with these scenes of people not, you know, being uh, not even woke. That's not the fucking word because woke's a stupid term, but not not completely asleep. Correct. V for Vendetta. Yes. V for Vendetta. Phenomenal movie, by the way. Yes. Under un, underrated. I don't think it ever got the acclaim. I think it gets a cult following, but it doesn't have the initial acclaim. I don't think it had. It was that huge coming out until it was like on video. I just remember watching Agreed. it over and over again. Cool, man. I've got one more. Go. This is another one as a kid um, I didn't understand. Sir, you know this because you know dates apparently, Mr. Virgo over there. When did Aliens come out? 1986. 1986. Okay, so I would have been 11. Was it summer? Probably. Okay, so I'd, okay. I would have been, ele- been 11. Um, now... I was a pretty sheltered kid with my family and stuff. Not sheltered, like completely ignorant to life, but we didn't watch a lot of like movies. We didn't rent a lot of movies and things like that. So we just, you know, had TV or whatever, played board games and do whatever stuff. So July 18th, 1986. Very well done. It was off by two months. What I'm the so hell's, sorry. What's today's date? July 12th. Off by oh, six days. We should have done this next week. Son of a nutcracker. Because we're doing podcasts on the 18th, bro. Damn it, we're way off. Ding. Um, so this is one where Aliens comes out, and I did not know that Aliens was a sequel. Nor did I. Oh. Well, I knew, but I never saw the original. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really know any context of Aliens. It just looked like its own thing, because you and I have both very much discussed this. Alien is a horror movie. Aliens is a sci-fi action thriller. I agree. Correct. They are, com- they are complete independent movies in their own right. They could absolutely be complete separate. Except for the main character and the creature. Except for the main character who happens to be in both, but the creature's not. The creature was destroyed in the first one. It's a, it's a different creature. No, it's not. It's on the eye. It's the eggs. It's different eggs. It's the same creature, dude. It's the same species. Species, sure. But you understand what I'm. Yes, all, I what understand. I'm saying is, it's like not like semantics, bro. No, but I, I know. But when I'm talking about sequels, generally, what the only the only connection is that they go back to Ripley. Yes, it's not like yes. it, it's not really like a. a I sequel. will slurp this if you don't want your attitude. Oh, bro, please don't. Ding. Um, so. The scene, because afterwards, the alien, or um, aliens being a sequel, I didn't know. Yes. So I go into that, and the thing sucks on his face, and then they're all just sitting there eating, everything's good. The first one? Well, no, what's the second one? When did the second one happen? How did the second one happen? What? When he got off his face the first time. When wasn't, Which weren't movie they are you eating? talking about? The aliens. Didn't it, weren't they also eating during that one, or was that in the lab when he popped out of the guy's chest? The first chest buster that's from Alien. The first chest buster in Aliens, yes, was when they're in the hive. Oh, that's and right. They find Correct. the guy in the wall, and that's he wakes right. up and goes, "Kill me!" That's, that's and then right. he goes, "Kill me!" Correct. That's the one. Thank you. Who are you Thank talking you. to, bro? Bro, I, I am, <laughs> I am, I gotta stop drinking. The vodka, bro. I'm going to drink some more. Fuck it. Let's roll it, bro. All right, bro. I'm going to get you tequila in a second. You're goddamn right you are. (laughs) Damn it, Harley. If you were shooting for shit, you wouldn't catch a whiff. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. All right. So, yeah, the first chest popping scene was the one where they're all stuck to the wall, like cocoon style. In the hive, correct. I thought it was a woman, but it might have been a dude. Yeah, it may have been. It's very difficult to tell. It It, It may have been a woman. You're correct. The person's hair was moppy and floppy. Son it was of... floppy. It was like a moppy hair. I wish so. I could have floppy hair. Could have just been a hippie. Could have just been a hipster or whatever. So it was that where it just went, Pff. I had no idea. I never saw the first one to know that. So you didn't know that was going to happen? Yeah, no idea. And then the flamethrower comes out. And then the flamethrower. And then, yeah. And then you hear that sound. 
It's that scene of aliens. And only because I didn't have the first one. If I had known about the first so one, good. it would have been the first scene. God, it's so good, uh, dude. Yes! That's one we could, we just had that and repeat in the background while we're, okay. while we're podcasting. Oh, it's so good, dude. All right, sir. You got a couple more, I think. So, uh, Aliens, my favorite movie, right? Yeah. So, there's one scene, honorable mention, very end, Ripley's got Newt in her arm, and she hears the queen move behind her. Ripley puts the child down, and she tilts her head and turns around. with the. F- she's got the flamethrower and the gun. When she tilts her head like that, you know, you're like... You better watch the fuck. <laughs> I just love the when she moves her head. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah, she's, she's like she's gonna fuck up some shit. It's like this weird, like <laughs> creepy. It's like yes. she's creeping on the I guy. just love when she does that. She's I like, Oh, you think you snuck up on me? No, I knew you were fucking there. Oh, right? I got guns and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, my scene from Aliens strapped. My scene from Aliens is uh towards the beginning when they're on the drop they're on the Sulaco. Right in the drop ships behind them, and it's the briefing. You mean the ship that looks like a gun with the hat? Thank you for your service. Tin Naval foil, salute, tin foil brigade. Boom. So, um, at the very end, when uh, Private Hudson raises his hand, and Apone, Sergeant Apone says, What is it, Private? And he says, How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? He says, You secure that shit, Hudson, <laughs> because that question. Oh, How shit. do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? <laughs> that question can be asked of about anything. Think about every meeting and every conference call every human being has ever been on ever. <laughs> so let's say four ever. jobs ago in 1999, you're in a conference room with 12 dickheads and they go, okay, are there any questions? Yeah. How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? Right? Because you're like, what the fuck am I even, what am I even doing here? What the fuck was the point of this meeting? Why am I here? How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? You know what suck about that with my current job? Yeah, please. If I asked that question, they'd take me seriously. (laughs) And they wouldn't think like, well, they wouldn't, they'd just be like, uh, they wouldn't answer it. (laughs) It's so funny because. But it's funny because like you're talking about how do you get every meeting? Just get out of each job. Which is a little sidebar to that because there's a little, the word chicken shit, the, um, the last scene of some kind of wonderful, uh, the high school with type movie. Eric Stoltz. With Eric Stoltz. Oh, fuck yes. When they're at the party and he's about to get his ass kicked by the main dude and his three friends, mm. but then like the badass motherfuckers and all the fucking leather show up and he goes, man. I don't smell nothing but chicken shit up in here. <laughs> and he's tilting his nose up because he goes the way he says chicken that. shit. And I'm like, that just sounds just like aliens. I just love chicken shit. Chicken shit. How Eric Stoltz is like the artsy geek guy, but he makes friends with all the fucking badasses. And I, I, that's cool. That's aliens. Aliens fucking rocks. So I've got one more honorable mention. Go. Um, it's from Megzy. Yes. Megzy's favorite movie. Yes. Road to Perdition. Okay. Really good movie. Yeah. Um, slow as fuck. So it's really hard to kind of just stay awake through. I've Is watched three hours. I watched the beginning 13 minutes like nine times so far. Nine times. Nine. 19. No, 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 19. Nine times. Um, and it just, it's slow. It's just very artistic. So I remember watching it the first time. On my own, and not on my own, I was with some people, but we're just hanging out watching the movie. And I'm going, wow, this movie's beautifully filmed. It's just a beautiful movie. It's pretty. The rain, there's all these different, like, cinematic things they do. And I just do one of these things. I'm like, I wonder what if it won an Oscar, right? So I look up, it won Oscar for cinematography, well, which was kind of cool. There you go. So that's what's part of this whole scene. So the, the scene is towards the end, right before, spoiler, have you seen it? No. Okay. I mean, yeah, a million years ago. So Tom Hanks has to kill somebody, but in order to kill somebody, he has to kill that person's father first. Ugh. And they're close. So Tom Hanks is close with the guy's dad. I don't want to give it away. That's the problem. So, ba- well, I mean, do you want me to tell you the story yeah. a little bit? Okay. So basically, Daniel Craig, James Bond, 
kills Tom, one of Tom Hanks's sons, but the wrong one by accident. Jesus. Because the kid saw Daniel Craig kill somebody early in the, in the movie. So like he killed the witness, but he's Tom Hanks son. But Daniel Craig is the son of Paul Newman. And Paul Newman's like the head of the boss of the, of this gang of group of people. So Tom Hanks has to eventually kill Paul Newman because he has to get to the son. But if he kills the son, then Paul Newman's people will get him, you know, kind of, it's all gangster. You know, how that gangster shit works out. So anyway, it's a scene where it's just, it's just pouring down rain and Newman is with like two or three of his guys and they're holding the umbrella over him, walking to his car and they go up to the car and the driver in the car is slumped over the steering wheel. So he pulls back on the guy and the guy's obviously been killed, shot. And like right then is Newman like, oh, fuck. He's like, I, I'm, I'm fucked. And next thing you know, the guy holding the umbrella, holes start going through the umbrella. Dude gets blown up. This guy gets blown up, whatever. Hanks just mows them all down with like a Tommy gun with a drum. And then he walks slowly up to Newman and Newman's like, if it's anyone, I wish you, I'm glad it was you. And he just fucking like, it's gotta be like 20, 30. I mean, brrr, like no one that you cared about like that. Could you shoot like that? Like right. you had to feel that rage, right? Brrr. So then Hanks goes upstairs to Craig's. He walks into the bathroom where Craig's like taking a bath and just goes pop, pop, pop and walks out. And as he walks out, he nudges the door and the door has a mirror on it and it swings closed. And you see the reflection of Craig in the mirror. And it's probably one of the most coolest shot scenes I've ever seen in a movie. It's just so cool. And that's hers. So that's that was, fantastic. That's her, yeah, that's her honorable mention. I dig that. Thanks, Megzy. Yeah, I Thanks dig that. Thanks for sharing nice that job. one. I like that. She did, it, it was an excellent one. We watched it just recently. And I'll show More it than you. just 13 minutes. Yeah. Well, I can watch the end of it and the beginning of it, apparently. Because I fall asleep at 13 minutes in, man. Why don't you have a bunch of coffee, bro? Maybe. It, but I don't want to slurp it. It's hot. The first quarter. So. <laughs> okay. Honor is this last one? Or no, one? I got like a bunch of honorable mentions. Oh, well, let's do it. Like, uh, well, the last on my list is uh, John Wick, and I don't know. Whoa. I don't. I don't know which scene to pick. I, I, so I'm going to err on the side of caution and pick the scene in the church at towards the end where he's in the chair tied up and he's talking to the the Russian father, and John Wick says, the "People keep asking me if I'm back. I'm thinking I'm back," and then Russian walks out and then. His friend from across the street, William Defoe, shoots him, shoots one of the guys, and then John Wick kills the other guy with his bare fucking hands. But the way his his the tone of his voice when he says, "I'm thinking I'm back," but there's there, there's so many John Wick has. How many? There's it's crazy. You know the scene of him walking into the spa with the young Russian kid, you know, and kills everybody in there. And then there's I really like the scene where he's got the sledgehammer in his basement and he's how pissed he is because his dog got killed, you know, and yes. Um, <laughs> also the scene uh, where they first come into his house and he's just John Wick is just fucking <sighs> crazy. Yeah. Just, just one of those ultra crazy ones. Yeah. So John Wick like that Jack Reacher and yes. uh, uh Gun, uh, shoot them up. Those never would fucking work in real life. None well, of no them. shit. No that's one why would it's fucking a movie, survive. Right? What, they're yeah. just so beautifully done. Yeah, just, that's why it's oh, a movie. Oh, the expendable. Same fucking thing. Yeah, what about all... the Matrix scene, you know, in the elevator shaft, you know, oh, or the yeah. elevator lobby yeah. with like just oh, the, the yeah. columns are just being destroyed. You know what I mean? And then them, you know, Trinity and and, Ma and Neo, Neo jumping yeah. off the walls and oh, shit. Yeah. Just it's crazy shit. You know, so... um. Other ones that I thought was interesting that we didn't touch on, 16 Candles, have how many- Automobile. Yeah, like the whole scene with him falling out of the tree with yeah. the grandparents. Yes. You know? Or riding the bike, the, with, the, motion, yeah. the motion bike with, right. the, with the gym teacher. Um, so many. Well, Lake, big lake. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the scene with the Ferraris, you know? The, the them guy at the ball stealing game. this Ferrari? Yeah, the, the, guy, the auto attendant stealing the Ferrari. Mm. Or them. doing uh, winding it back where he knocks yes. it off the thing yes. and it drives off. Right. The, them at the ball game. Oh, my God. The parade. Um, like all of that. Yeah, the parade scene. Sausage King of Chicago. <laughs> Abe, Abe Froman, Froman. <laughs> the Sausage King of Chicago. Mm. Devastatingly handsome. Um, <sighs> Breakfast Club, we didn't mention. Rooney, you're an asshole. <laughs> I just, um, demented and Breakfast sad, Club. but social. 
I thought it was interesting. We none of us, neither of none of us, neither yeah, of us picked any Indiana Jones movies. I thought about him, but I could, I don't have a scene that's just so awesome. When he almost the rips Makata Indy's Ra. heart out. Yeah, that's you know? the only one I think about. Um, I I didn't like. I just yeah. The original, the the Raiders of the Lost Ark, when he's got his whip on the truck towards the beginning, and he's. On the ground, on the he's, tank, hang, or, he's pulling no, himself yeah. up. Oh the yeah, tank was in the third. Tank one. was in the third one. Where he's yeah. going in the thing. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, but that first one, Raiders yeah. was groundbreaking when he was being oh, yeah. drugged by the truck, and he's got the whip. Well, the whole scene in the cave in the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. The whole was thing ridiculous. with the, with the, the blow boulders, darts, yeah, and the whole. Th- I mean, yeah, and and then right. Doc Ock, right? Doctor Octopus, who played he played Doctor the guy, yes, the bad yes, guy, with switching the sand well, for I, the yeah, and then he gets and killed he gets like it, yeah, four seconds later. Him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um. Lastly, beautiful. not honorable mention, but I have to pick it, and I know we did this in the best movies or whatever sure. the other one was. Uh, uh, Desert Islands. Yes. Oh. Was um, Star Trek Two: Wrath of the Con. The movie, the scene where the Reliant was destroyed and Ricardo Montalban, when he says, I will spit at thee. Mm-hmm. And he, the, 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 the fucking rage. You could like, you could feel it coming off the screen. Vengeance. Yes. Like what? And I never thought he was that great of an actor, but holy sh- I didn't know. Like, holy shit. And he was all buff, his pecs were popping out and shit. And he was golden brown, and the dude... He looked like a fucking lion. <laughs> yeah, he's like... Like, didn't he? Oh, he's like... Kirk. Yeah. It's just like the vent Because he killed his wife. Kirk yes. killed his wife, right? right? So, so, like, that whole... The vent Like, just he the, just was not giving up. Well, that scene was all his, right? Yeah. That was all him, alone, mm-hmm. and the bridge was just destroyed and he's bleeding and his crew's dead mm. and there's just him it goes to ram him or, yeah uh, and he's just like i i don't care if i'm gonna die but you're coming you with, with me exactly <laughs> so that scene is just that is beautiful the, he just he made the movie but that scene was holy cow yeah and we we said it before but it's it was like a sequel of one of the tv episodes yeah, that's what's so fucking crazy about it. Because I didn't. Once again, when I first saw Khan, I didn't know. No, me neither. Because I was sheltered from like seeing that kind of stuff back. Yeah, then. I never watched any Star Trek. Right, I didn't know much about that. Because so, well, then they were all reruns by the time right. I was, and I didn't know that. And then sometime in my late teen years, I see a Star Trek with Ricardo Montalban. I'm like, what the fuck's he doing playing a different character? And then I find out it's fucking Khan in the first place. Yeah, it's fucking beautiful. It's totally beautiful. Well, I think that was a gorgeous thing, sir. Thank you, two Tambian. I hope you guys stay safe out there. Yeah. This has been a shit ton of movie scenes that we just either chuckle at shit ton. that mean a lot. I'd like to thank you for coming. I'd like well, to thank you for being here. But not in socks. Yeah, no socks thank at all, you. bro. Or sockless. Well, yeah. Exactly. So that was weird. Uh well, coming in socks. I understand. I got you. Oh, I just okay. was trying to avoid it. Mm, you did too, you did too good a job, sir. You That'd be less subtle. 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 I want to get subtle highlights in my hair. Me too. Ricardo Pantaban. Fantasy Island. Did you the see starship, my starship? The starship. The starship. Did you? Did you, did you? I don't know. Did you see my Instagram? Did yes. The podcast. The podcast. I, I, I liked it. it. Oh, you did. You my liked doggies it? liked it. I don't understand what happened with the pictures. Of yeah, each. Instagram's <laughs> hard. We'll have to yeah, have a conversation awful. about. We're that. gonna have to talk about this. <laughs> um, well, this has been Movie Scenes. I hope you guys join us at www.beergoogles.com. That's double E, double O, double G, and double G. All the double Gs. Double E, double O, double G. Um, please go on knockedconscious.com as well, and we've got YouTube channels and everything. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment, tell us your scenes. I want to hear one because if you guys have some cool ones, I'm happy to talk about those too because we could paint such an eloquent picture. Do you see how beautifully we just we used words to paint these beautiful scenes? If you loved PCU also, you should tell us. Oh, yeah, please. And if you hated it, please keep that to yourself because I, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. I've never seen it, so tell me. Well, bro, we're going to watch it. Okay. So I love you guys. Peace out. Also, uh, yeah. BeerGoogles.com and KnockedConscious.com. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us, boys and girls.
I like your dance. 17 days? 17 hours, man. Man, we're not going to last 17 hours, man. On the news this morning was 17 days of 110 or more. I was like, uh, 17 <laughs> days? We're not going to last 17 hours, man. That's the best fucking meme, bro. I should have took oh, a picture. Oh, you should have fucking done that. Shit. <laughs> oh, we're going to look for that. It was funny. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Peace out, y'all. That's so funny. Say when. <laughs>